sometimes just sitting alone is nice. Yeah. Yeah, when you're off, like, just by yourself. Yeah. Just, especially with, like, put on a hat, all the chaos. I put on a hat, and I just walk into the place, sit at the bar, and just eat and drink. So, yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's nice to kind of get a, detach a little bit, you know? Yeah. I, I never mentioned, like, congratulations on just everything. Thank you. On Thank fucking you. everything. Last time I saw you was probably before 2020. Yeah. Yeah, I was... Time flies, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, so many things happen in between, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know when we met, we met mm, 20, 2012, 2011, right? maybe? Yeah, 2010, 2011, somewhere around there. Yeah, that's with, um, with, with JP. Yeah. Uh, that was, who was it that somebody called me? I think it was my friend, my old friend, Robert. It was Rob. It was yeah. Rob. And he called me. He's like, "Hey, I got somebody that wants to uh, that wants you to become a, a in house tuner." I was like, "What? Really?" I remember that. It was pretty cool. I just came from Puerto Rico. Twenty. I was end of twenty ten, going towards twenty eleven. That's when I came back from Puerto Rico, and that's when I started tuning a little bit more here in Florida, mm. South Florida, and then that's when Rob called me. That's the time we met, right? Yeah, that's around that time. Around that time. Yeah, I was I was about twenty five, and I was like twenty three, twenty four. I'm like thirty five right now, but yeah. yeah, we were like starting to venture off with like we were talking about like opening a shop. Well, he was the money man, you know. I was yeah. like more of the 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 hands on do boy type thing, and I was like fucking it, let's let's do this shit. So yeah, he opened up the shop, and then he got a dyno, and we got you know lifts tools all this stuff and then yeah rob came by and he was like oh a buddy of mine uh named javi he does uh he tunes he does he's been in a lot of like street tuning i think at the time he was telling me you were doing like a bunch of dsms and stuff at that time right yeah yeah, yeah well, DSMs 40, is where i started yeah it was more personal than anything else like my personal car and i started doing that and I actually was being on some Hondas with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And now I like Hondas. And now you're just, you have just tuned the fastest K-Series out there. Yeah, that, yeah. Is, that is actually pretty wild. Yeah, you're yeah, coming from that. It. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Back then, when I, when I was starting then, well, see, I started tuning in 07. Mm. <clears throat> then I took a break in 2010 because I left to go to Puerto Rico and go to school. Then when I came back, end of 2010... I didn't like I didn't like the school, so I I decided to come back. Um, yeah, fuck school anyway. <laughs> yeah, that that was it was a trip. You know, the guys over there love to just mess around way too much. They mm-hmm. wouldn't take anything serious, you know. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't like it, so I I left. Um, you know, it just when I got back here, that's when I started tuning again, and then I got into the Honda stuff a little bit more, and then. JP, when I first when I first started with working with you guys, that's when JP, you know, introduced me into the K series stuff, which I was always staying away from just because of that VTC stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh no, timing degrees yeah. and all this bullshit. I was like, oh no, what am I supposed to do here? You know, yeah. and it's just like I learned along the ways. I, I, you know, asking questions obviously helped out a lot. You know, like asking the right people. Uh, sometimes you would ask and then no one would answer. Yeah. Or they didn't want to give you. Yeah. You know. Especially like in this day and age, a lot of people are very competitive, and it's just like, you know, I've done it this way. You know, why can't you do it? You know, this the same way they probably learned or whatever it yeah. is. You know, I I hate gatekeepers. Yeah. For any type of thing, you know, I, as agree. far as like a community, like we're all out for the same thing. Right. You know. You know sharing discussing like that whole thing is just like oh no like kind of like go fuck yourself like attitude which whatever i get you know it's like part of racing and competitiveness and all that stuff right, right. i get it but also you know you don't have to be a fucking dickhead most of the time right. either you know but you're I, like one of the fucking nicest people i've ever met in my life that's just on everything i mean i tried to keep it this you know the same way throughout the years you know yeah i i, I ask i get asked a lot if i can teach you know pe- people to tune and I just don't think I'm a good teacher, but yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, if you're, if you're on a, on a role where you're learning and you're, you know, you're getting information and you're kind of going and you ask me questions, which 
you kind of know what you're asking, then I'll help you. Yeah. But if it's your complete no knowledge and you want to learn, I can't. I just yeah. cannot. I don't know how to teach you that. Yeah. So a lot of these people want to get into it because they, they like it, but they don't even know how an engine works. So it's it's a little hard, you know, to, to teach someone like that. Yeah. So that's why I say I'm not a good teacher. But, you know, again, if you ha if you already know your stuff and you want to just ask me questions, I'm, I'm all about it. You know, like I can help. Yeah. I don't mind. If you already have like the fundamentals and pretty much the basics of how like, you know, air fuel ratio works. Yeah, like I got guys from like, so like South America, like they they'll ask me. I, I had a couple guys I it's like, "Hey, I'm learning, you know, I'm doing this." And they teach and they kind of like I'm like, "What do you know? Like show me what you know." And then they they kind of show me along the ways and then I'll I'll start giving them information, you know? And mm -hmm. then eventually, you know, they they stop asking. Where in South America? Uh, Panama. I had a guy in Panama, and I had a guy in uh, uh, Honduras. Honduras. Yeah. Any Argentinians? And then eventually, I ended up going to oh. Honduras and Guatemala for tuning. It's it's a good experiences, you know. Mm. It's actually it's it's a great experience being able to travel. Yeah. For, for tuning, I mean, it's free. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they pay for all the expenses, and then you know they pay for your services too yeah so no yeah it was it's, it's it has been it has been great i cannot complain at all you know yeah. it's been rough but it's been great yeah you know? yeah you can take the good with the bad yeah bad, you know it's not always going to be fucking but yeah back then when in 2000 what 11 12 and when we first started doing this, the the greeny k mm -hmm. that was my first you know k series you know with vtc so weird and you know what let me tell you Jeremy from Dry Cartel, mm. he was such a big help because yeah. at first we talked to him on the we phone. We met him like, at a Honda Day, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But we first talked, I would talk to him on the phone because of JP mm. and um, we would ask him questions, you know, along with what, you know, what to do with VTC. So he helped out a lot. Um, if it wasn't for JP, honestly, it, I don't think I would have moved on so fast, yeah. you know, because um, he gave he pretty much just gave me the car and he's like here learn yeah and he forced me to learn so, trusted you like yeah like, i mean honestly. that was great times honestly it was really yeah. good times we got to travel and those were learn. amazing times i yeah. miss those days man me too actually yeah you know? and then obviously you know afterwards you know jimbo joined and i had time good times too and it just lasted very little bit you know yeah but you know it kind of sucks but you know it's funny that that dyno was the dyno i purchased from after it got sold to Pond's Auto Service, mm -hmm. I purchased that dyno, and that's the one I put in my in my shop. And then I ended up selling it. But oh man, yeah, my mom had cancer again. So no way. Those are the reasons why I ended up selling the dyno. Fuck and, cancer, dude. Yeah, no, dude. It's it's been rough. It's been rough. But um, she's she's doing good. That's she's good. Doing better. That's good. She went. She's like that's been doing chemo now. and everything. Uh, right now she's doing me medication. Um. Oral medication. Oh, oral medication. Yeah. Okay. So, like, I, I guess it's considered a oral chemo. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, what kind of cancer is it? Uh, or... So, she had, I can't know the specific names, but yeah. she had breast cancer. And mm -hmm. now, after five years after that, um, it's when it spread it everywhere. Uh, different oh, it's like parts. an explosive um, type. It was, yeah. She got, in, got in her bones, her lungs, uh, her skull, not the brain, the skull. The skull. And then it got into, you know, a couple other places, but they're, they're as they're, they just did a, a checkup and then they're getting smaller. They're getting the tumors, smaller. So that's good. And that means the medication is working. So that's good. So yeah, dude, I ended I'm up so selling. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's good. I mean, it's she's she's a tough cookie, man. I yeah. tell you that. She's 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 rough. You know? she's twice. She's, twice, yeah. yeah. So um, she, I can tell you that she's been, you know, a fighter for sure. Mm. But um, th those are the reasons why I got rid of the dyno and my and the RSX. Yeah. So, no, so I could pay some know. of her bills and stuff, and I knew things were getting kind of slow because, you know, after once once COVID was already kind of over, mm. it, you can tell that things were just kind of slowing down. And then last year is when it was the slowest, and then that's when I was like, you know what? I, there's along with other reasons too, but I was like, you know what? I think it's time I get rid of it and just at least pay off a couple months with her of her bills, yeah. her rent and all that. So yeah, you got to take care of your day one, man. Yeah, yeah. That's for Moms sure. are they're always there for you no matter what. Man, you know, strong women, strong mothers. Like there's nothing there's nothing else like that. Yeah, yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, but um, I mean, so then after after K Phonics, it was I was all on on my own. I guess I, I was 
I think I worked at a shop after that. Yeah, I think it was a mechanic shop in Homestead. Mm. And I remember. Oh, is it? Was it? Um, Gasca. Gasca. Or, yeah. Gasca. It was afterwards, right? Yeah, that yeah was, it was because I remember Looney. He worked there as well for yes. a bit. Yes. And then at that time, um, I started working in a bunch of different places after the shop closed. I went to work at H. Greg. Um, you were down the street too at that um, with the county, right? Yeah. Aren't you? Yeah, yeah. But was, before before I got into the city, I was working at like a, a couple like few dealerships here and there. I was just like right. all over the place. But then I, I landed a, a fleet mechanic position at the for the city of Homestead. But yeah, yeah. I was right down the right street down the from Gasca. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So then I worked there and I remember him telling me all Yeah, the I would time, come by and fucking fuck with you guys, talk yeah, shit and everything. That's yeah. true. I remember him telling me, he's like, performance is not going to pay. It's never going to pay. It's never going to go anywhere. Mm. I was like, dude, but tuning does pay. It's going to be great. Yeah. And I would go back and forth, back and forth with, you know, with that disagreement. But, you know, we worked. And then finally one time I was like, hey, I need a week off. And I took that week off. And he says, okay, let's do a deal. He told me, let's do a deal. Take the week off. See how much money you make. And if... Whatever it is, I'll match it, and you can stay with me, and you take care of the shop um, to do, like, the front, mm. um, like a uh, service advisor mm. plus mechanic. That's what I was doing at the time. Mm. I was doing both. Um, and he said, let me know how much you make, I'll, and I'll try to match that. So the week passed. And I, that was my first thousand dollars in three days. Jesus Christ! And in three days, and I took the rest of the days. He off. couldn't match that. <laughs> he couldn't could match that. He was like, "No, I can't do that. I can't do that." Hell he, yeah! What he wanted was for me to let go of tuning, mm -hmm. and then take care of his stuff or work at the shop. Yeah, you know, completely one hundred percent, and literally put my phone down and not answer anyone anybody anymore. Yeah. You know, and I just couldn't do it. I could, yeah. Once I knew that I can do three days, I said, I said, even if it was, even if I do it in six, seven days, a thousand dollars to me at that time was great. Yeah. You know what I mean? So not only that, you're, you're doing actually what you love to do. Right. You know, so right. it's not even necessarily even about the money. The money's great. Like you have to pay the bills and you have to do things, but you love tuning. Yeah. You know, I and do. And when you see everyone appreciating what you're doing, because Everybody was asking about you. Everybody would always like, yo, where's Javi? Javi, you know, like your your customer service and the way you deal with people, you're so patient. Yeah. You're so patient and you're so willing to just go the extra mile because you're also learning as you were going as well, yeah. you know, but people also appreciate your transparency. Right. You know, you, you didn't always say like, Oh yeah, whatever. I got it. Da, da, da. Like people ask you a question, even though if it was like the most mundane, monotonous question, you would always, you know, treat them with like the utmost respect. I mean, I tried to do the best, you know, nowadays what I do is if the car is not ready, which is always not yeah. ready, <laughs> I try, I and try it's to either it's not ready and then it's ready last minute. Yes. Yeah. So I let them do their own work. I don't get my hands dirty as much as I used to. Yeah. So I let them do their own work. I tell them what to do. Mm. They do it. I always encourage them to bring someone that they can trust with the work, you know, whatever mechanic work they need to get done. Mm -hmm. So now I don't, I kind of just sit back, tell them what to do. Yeah. So it's kind of easier, mm. you know, but, and then of course, now that I don't have my dyno, um, STP at uh, STP Motorsports in uh, Fort Lauderdale, mm. You pay them for the dyno time and they strap the car. STP, bro. Fucking, I totally forgot. They're still yeah. around? They just moved to a new location. Oh, really? Yeah, beautiful location. Nice. Now. He remodeled the whole building. It looks really nice. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see the final touch. You know? Yeah, because STP, be tomorrow, actually. they were there off, where was this? Peters Road. On um, Peters, yeah. 441. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's where they're at right there. They've been there for years. Yeah. And they, they're yeah, still going to be there. They've been killing it, yeah. They're still going to be there. It's just going to be down, literally into another shop somewhere else, like down the street. He yeah. purchased the building. Now it's his instead of renting. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So, like, it's good to see. It's good to go there, put drive up the dyno, and let them strap it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's comfortable. Now it's, things have changed, of course. You know, yeah. not like before. Or you have, I had to. You put in the work, man. Yeah. So now it's, you know. Yeah, yeah. Definitely put in the work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that was so cool that, you know, we met, we met that way. And... I got to know you, we got to know each other. You know, I was learning a lot too because dude JP, he was he was just like, let's do this. And I was like, whatever, like if you want to do it, I'm down. 
Right. But, you know, a lot of times I didn't build a lot of K-series motors prior to, you know, having the shop. So we would get, you know, motors come in. And I was just like, you know, I'll we'll put it together, you know? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a lot of fun for sure. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously having someone that has money yeah. was always a, b a big thing, you know, like it, it helped out. Yeah. You know, and then afterwards it was frustrating putting into, you know, his all motor car back then yeah putting yeah. in money into those cars so i had met frustrate uh in 2008 mm -hmm. and i used to tune his b series and then mm -hmm. when he went k series uh, i couldn't do it yeah. which is right in between that, that line where you know I, he went k series and then i couldn't do it and then k phonics uh k phonics happened and then i learned mm -hmm. and then but at that time since i had told him i was like hey i can't i don't know how to do k series that's when he went to Durf. yeah and then he was tuning with Durf, and then that's when JP convinced him to come back because he's like, "Hey, Javi can do K series, you know." Yeah. And he came back, and we were doing, you know, do yeah, late nights. We'd be there. Booty would be there, and yeah, it was great. It was good out. times. It was yeah. really good times. Really, honestly, and it was a lot of learning, though. It was a, it's just so much information back then. It's like yeah. I said, on it was a lot of little. It was a lot of information, but there was not a lot of people talking about it. Right. You know. Right. It was yeah. still it was still very new and coming out with it like now K series fucking K series is on in everything. Yeah. You know? I can only imagine like where K Phonics would be if K Phonics was still right. You know, because yes. it, it was a very it was a K series specific shop. I even thought about um when I opened up my LLC. Mm. I did it four years ago. Um I even thought about using the same name yeah. because it was a cool name yeah it really was a lot of people like you know it. how we came up with that fucking name <laughs> no dude so me and jp we were at, we were at his house and we were just whatever i think he was doing like a barbecue or whatever and then he was building a like a turbo k series and he was getting all the parts um who's spun tech remember oh, yeah. spun tech yeah so spun tech uh, isn't had that, uh, isn't that ben bravo yeah ben yeah yeah so ben had um he had his own shop, but he had like, you know, a K series that he was selling and it was like all the turbo kit and whatever. So, um, JP got all the stuff from him and then he put everything together, whatever. We got it tuned. Uh, I think, yeah, Josh, non 51. Yeah. Shout out. Um, he tuned the car and then whatever, like me and him were talking. He's like, why don't we just open up a shop? This and that. And I was just like, what about K phonics? And he's like, K phonics. I was like, you know, like hooked on phonics. So it was like hooked on K's. Yeah. And that was like the little, like the slogan, yeah. the hooked on K's. It was like K-Phonics. And then he was like, oh, that's fucking pretty fucking cool. So we just ran with that. And then he got a shop over there at, at Marlin Road. Funny enough, <laughs> fucking Savan, he has his shop literally right next to. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah. I remember and that. then I got Savan into the K-Series because he was a big b series guy and yeah I, yeah and he hit me up one day he's just like hey i'm thinking about doing k series i'm just like just bring it by to the shop and we'll, we'll get it done so he brought it to the shop we put a k series for him and it's been history ever since with yeah. him too yeah like i said it was it's 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 great. cool to see how it progressed so much yeah yeah time and you you don't you know, when you go on the streets now you don't see b series anymore no that's it it's over it's rare and the only the only time you see a b series is running low eights at the track yeah yeah that's it yeah you know you or just, sevens yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure i mean look at look at our people yeah simple, he's still with it. simple b series beautiful car yeah simple b series though mm. and run sevens yeah no problem dude i saw him the other day at a at a Cuban bakery here in Homestead. Oh, okay. I was like, Peepa, what's up? And he's like, hello. I was like, what's up? I, like, I haven't seen anybody in so long. Like, I've been so off, like, detached from, you know, like, racing and the car scene, like, because I, I've been really focused in, like, my career that I was in now. Yeah. So since I worked for, I worked for the city of Homestead, I was a fleet mechanic for about, like, eight, nine years. Wow. And then I switched that to become a lineman. So mm -hmm. I was an apprentice lineman. So like they, they're like the high voltage guys. Yeah. Um, and then I got into like a crazy accident. Like oh, sure. I'm lucky to be here to wow. pretty much. So at that point, it kind of, I kind of realized like the things that I love to do, I was like getting away for it to try to get into a career that was, you know, had a pension you get paid well right. you know like a secure like a secure blanket but the shit almost fucking killed me and 
it, it got to that point where is it really worth me doing something that could risk my life? I'd rather risk my life for something that I love to do, right. which would be cars, you know, meeting people, you know, just traveling, just things that I enjoy to do. And I've, and it took me back to K phonics, you know, that time was one of the best times I've had. Yeah. You know, they, there was times that were like hard. There were like shit times, but just like everything else. Though. Yeah. Like how many times could you just go to the track in the middle of the week, you know, and just do, you know, test yeah. hits and, you know, hang out with your boys and just, you know, whatever. Yeah. Work on cars. I, just you, smell the, the burning fuel. And <laughs> tires. And yeah. tires. Yeah, it's, it's totally different. Yeah. Totally different worlds for sure. You know, so. it's, not everybody can do it either, though. And not everybody can do it. That's the thing. I mean, it's just like every other job, right? Yeah. But I, You're like, I, you have to be willing to make some sacrifices yeah, and adjust sure. and adapt. I mean, I made a lot of sacrifices, you know, especially when it came to my family. Yeah. I did a lot of, a lot of hours of work. No, I remember, man. It's like. I remember. And, you know, and I, always, I would always tell my ex-wife, it's going to pay off. It's going to pay off. Mm. Don't worry. It's going to pay off. And eventually it paid off, you know. Now it's just a little rough, you know, because it's a little slow, but. Uh, just gotta venture off a little bit more than the Hondas. Yeah, I really gotta get out. You know, I love my Hondas, but here in South Florida, they're just not it anymore. Mm -hmm. They used to be a big thing. Yeah, now it's everything else. Yeah. What street. are you looking to get into now? So BMW stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I, was... I have, I have, <laughs> I have. So I wanted to get into that, um, and then I honestly wanted to get into the, the the Hyundai stuff. That's now these like the N cars, the N cars. Yeah, that seems pretty cool. I yeah. mean, you know, just get into flashing them, and you know, something simple. Yeah. So nothing too crazy. I seen guys in Puerto Rico already making five hundred horsepower. Yeah. So it's I mean, those are pretty similar to the the K twenty Cs now, right? Yeah, very similar. Yeah. Everything now is pretty much yeah. you know turbocharged, <laughs> yeah. two liters, and an airflow meter. Yeah. So it's and then high pressure, you know, fuel pumps, yeah, and yeah. direct injection, that direct injection shit. Yeah, that piece of crap. Yeah, it, how 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 different is it compared to like like fuel injection? So it's very similar to to regular fuel injection, right? Port injection, mm. right? So yeah, port, yeah, port yeah. injection. Yeah. So it's very similar. The only thing is that obviously it's direct, so you get to be able to run the cars a little leaner, and then. You run out of fuel faster. Yeah. So the injectors are bigger from factory. Mm. So like 1300s, 1400s, 1500s around there, CCs. Mm. And then may, maybe I'm wrong, but in some cars, it's like that. Um, the only thing that I don't like is that you do run out of fuel faster. So you have to add port injection to make Always. it work. Yeah. Or meth, you know? Yeah. But the safest way is port injection. Yeah. Add another system into it and then... Have another computer like a piggyback, or if you can get a Mo Motec, Motec yeah. <laughs> yeah. then it'll work out really good. But um, it's they're very similar. It's just they don't, they just don't, they're not this, exactly the same. Yeah. You know? How the B like the B fifty eight um that platform? So so I go to the shop in Tampa when I go to go to Tampa to work, and that's all they do is BMW stuff, mm. and they always talk about that. And I never get into it. I never. And now it's when I'm starting to listen more. Yeah. Because it's like, okay, this is what's getting popular. Especially the new G80 bodies. Though. Yeah. Those are nice cars. Dude. They're doing great things with those So things. my lady, she has a M340i, mm -hmm. which is a B58. Yeah. The same shit. That thing pulls like a fucking mule. And it's not even a G80. Yeah. Yeah. The G80s are stupid fast. But people are running eights and the B58s already. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I'm like so behind now. It's yeah. Like when I start hearing those things, it's like, damn, I'm so behind in, in these things. I yeah. need to catch up. So, you know, that's one of the things I want to get into. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm if I'm late to it, but I guess not because, I mean, I came in late into the Honda stuff. Yeah, too, yeah, you know? yeah. But, I mean, times have changed. That's for sure. So, you know, I do need to go along with time. So, yeah, I need to kind of... You have to evolve. I, I, yeah. I kind of say, like, if you don't evolve, you're going to die. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if... You could always stay doing, you know, stuck in the same thing, which is fine. You know, you're always going to have that there. But, you know, you need oh, you need room to grow. Yeah. You know, that's I mean, it, and that's how you've come so far as well. Right. Right. 
But I, I thought I, I even thought about moving to Orlando and open up a shop over there instead. And where are you of, staying at now? Here in Miami? Yeah, so down in Homestead. So you stay you're here in Homestead? Yeah, oh, I stay with a friend. Damn. I stay with a friend. Once I got divorced and I came down because I knew the work was here. Yeah. So for me, it would have been easier to work here and then just go visit my kids. Dude, I feel evening. so bad anytime I invite anybody over here because it's like Homestead. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Mm -hmm. It's like here in Homestead. If you're in Miami or wherever, Fort Lauderdale, there was like, God damn, my, like Homestead. I'm like, yeah, I know. But whatever, I have beer. So <laughs> <laughs> just come by. We'll hang out, you know. We'll, we'll make it well worth it and stuff like that. But yeah, Homestead, Homestead's growing big time, massively. Yeah, they're building homes left and right, left and right. So and to get out of here in the mornings is terrible. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Luckily, I, I work like you know, like ten minutes away. Yeah, going for further south, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you good? I'm, 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 I'm pretty good. But I'm just done with that shit too, dude. Like I love, I love my job. I love what I do and everything. But I just. I hate going to work and it's just like the same thing over, over and, over. and over and over again. Yeah. It's like we were kind of programmed to do these things. Yeah. Like go to school, finish school, go to college, mm -hmm. get a good job. Yeah. And then retire, retire. And, that's and then it. you die. Yeah. It's like <laughs> not, we, that wanna... was just so in, in, in yeah. embedded into our brains that that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. And I've always felt like, I cannot be that way. I can't be that way. You know, I, I just wanted to be a little bit, at least a little bit different. Yeah. So yeah. obviously, you know, I just, we just have to make it better, you know, but. Yeah. You got to take that risk too. I mean, think of like for me, I, I, fe I feel like I've, I've done so much. So when, right after K-Phonics, obviously for me, it blew up. Like yeah. I started getting work left and right. And obviously after frustrated getting, you know, after getting out of the all motor stuff and then getting into the K series uh, turbo stuff, um, it just kind of like started growing from there and it kept getting more busier and busier. Uh, friends of Frustrates were doing crazy things too, so I learned I learned a lot with them. Um, and then then came along traveling. Mm. So funny enough is that um, when I, my first trip was because of um, you work with Hondata for a bit. I, I went to classes. Okay, you did I just classes. went to classes uh, to because of because uh, Pons became a dealer, mm -hmm. and then I was part of the you know of the shop. So um, he's the one that sent me over to gotcha. do all the classes and stuff. So gotcha. I was able to do travel for that and mm -hmm. do the K Pro install class, mm -hmm. and then then I started doing. Um, I went to classes for some seminars for the the new stuff now, like the, all the all the direct injection stuff. Mm -hmm. So that was really cool to to do too, but um. My first first tra travel trip was to California. It was be the guys that bought the RSX, the bought um, oh, the toolbox. Oh, the RSX. They bought the toolboxes from uh -huh. the shop, and they and I forgot what else they bought. Um, the so when I get over there, uh, I start seeing the toolbox, and I'm like, oh crap! It brings me back memories, and then I met. I met the the other guy, which it, um, which it was Kete. Uh, you remember Kete? Kete, Kete, Kete. Mm, they used to call him Q, but anyways, mm. he's the one that. Uh, oh, nuts in your grill. Oh, okay, Kete. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you Just, can't forget that one. <laughs> you can't forget nuts on your grill. <laughs> yeah. So, so it, oh yeah, because he was living in California. He moved over there for like, his to, business and everything. He, as, as soon as I made that first trip, he, uh -huh. moved, he had already moved to Colorado. Okay. Oh, so I didn't okay, get, gotcha. But I got to meet him and all that stuff, you know. And I mean, I already knew him, but yeah, because of the racing stuff. But yeah. um, then I, I met his boy, which is Jay, and um, he's the one that had the K series on boost, and that was my first seven hundred horsepower or high hor higher horsepower, horsepower. Uh -huh. K series I was able to do. He's the one that. Get, was able to push me to do that. Um, I want to say this name. I keep. I keep forgetting. I. I, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. Um, he's a welder. Loaf. Loaf. Okay. Loaf. Loaf is the Camilo. one. Camilo. Yes. <laughs> um. So he's the one that connected me with California, mm -hmm. and then after that, uh, four months later, I he moved to Colorado, and then he's like, "Hey, elevation here is different. I need you to retune the car." So I had to go over there, mm -hmm. and I. I had so much fun going to Colorado. I did a lot of a lot of cars over there. It, you know, he helped me out a lot because his car was one of the fastest in the street. It was we were beating on the V eight guys, and nice. everybody was hating it. You know, 
but um, it, it brought along work for me. So I was always over there due to him helping me get over there and me working on his car. And finally, I got to see the RSX. And he saw, and he shows me the RSX. He sees my face and my reaction. It's like, I was always in love with the car. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a beautiful... I remember telling JP not to bring the RSX to keep the EK because the RSX was too heavy. Yeah. But then we were then we got into the RSX. That was Ryan Chin's old EK too. Yeah. I, I'll tell you another story about that oh, one. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> because he gave me both cars. At the end, long story short, I ended up with both cars as gifts. Mm -hmm. um, the RSX was given to me because he noticed how much i loved the car mm. so he you know I, I did some work for him as well and i kind of paid off that but it was more like gifts yeah and he shipped it over to me back to florida which is i was living in cape coral at the time mm. and shout out to the cape coral cats yeah they're doing big things right? fucking hey. <laughs> but um yeah i just I, I fell in love with the rsx i was with it i was that was a pretty RSX. It was. I tried to keep it as, as almost the same as possible. Yeah. You know? But then, uh, you know, I had to put a roll cage and yeah. things. I had to change. You know, he there. painted that in his garage, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember. Dude, I was with you him. You were with him, I yeah. was with him, yeah. And I think I have a, the car was I black. Have a picture. Yeah, the car was black. <laughs> and he's like, dude, I want to paint this like a Lexus pearl white. And <laughs> I was like, okay. So I'm, I was always down. Yeah, yeah. But he had an idea. I was just like, I don't give a shit. Like, I just want to be a part of this or whatever. Yeah. So... He put it, pulled it in his garage. He masked off all the... It was fucking the worst thing ever. He sealed off all the crevices so no dirt comes in, no dirt goes out or whatever. Dude, that shit was filled with just clear coat in the air. Like, I had it on my skin for, like, two weeks. <laughs> but, bro, that, that paint oh job, he, for painting, that guy is sick. Really? He's so good with, yeah, painting cars. I mean, the car came out great. Yeah fucking he painted in out we gutted it completely and do you remember with the red hatch that he painted the engine bay it was his name was carlos um it was a case swap we ended up doing i'm not sure if it was already with jimbo there and you were gone already i can't remember but we did the integra that had the chameleon engine bay no it wasn't integra was it the civic the right civic no um what was his name chris well, okay, so that was, yeah, Chris, that was JP's old hatch. hatch. Yes. And then he, yeah, we painted that one chameleon, but there was also an Integra that we painted chameleon as well. Whose was that? I don't remember. It was like a customer. It was just, oh, a, okay. a, yeah. Um, but but then, the, the guy that painted the red. It's a, it's a red hatch, and then we have, and we're doing a case swap. Juan. No, Carlos. Carlos, Carlos, Carlos. Yeah, Carlos. The yeah, Dominican okay. dude. Yeah, Dominican cat. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Long story short, he ended up in Colorado too with the same guy over there. That, what? Yeah, he, he what a up, small fucking world. Yeah, he's living over there now. I was gonna move over there too. See, I that's the to, thing. I what I love, I, I miss that that interaction, those stories, those little like serendipitous moments where it's just like, oh, I know this guy, and then you know you worked with him or you knew him, and then yeah. just I love that. Yeah, yeah it's. There's nothing like it for yeah. sure, you know. And then and cars just cars just bring people together. Literally period. bring people together. Yeah, it does. It really yeah. does. But yeah, it's just after that, that's it. It's just you know, I had the RSX and then I had to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. But I loved it. I mean, it was down more than it was up. But when it was up, it was flying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I loved it. I really did. So I had the EK because. Did it still have the carbon hood? No, I got it as a shell. Oh, okay. I got it as a shell. That carbon hood? It got damaged on a hail on a hailstorm. Oh man. So I ended up taking it because I spoke to my friend Jody. Um and he, he's like, Yeah, I can fix that more or less, no big deal. I'm like, even if I have to wrap it, I don't care. Mm. Because my friend Jay in Colorado bought me a drug cartel lung block. Um I wanted to do an all motor car. Because Shout I out just, Jeremy, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I had pictures when I when I went to do the class for K Pro install. Uh -huh. He's like, "Hey, come by. I'm just starting on your engine." And he had all the parts on the table. Holy shit! Everything was just so nice. It was a great experience going over there to see him put it. Was together. it like a dry sump motor or no? No, no, no. no. It was, it was okay. just a ninety ninety nine. Okay, gotcha. Nothing crazy. Mm. But it was my. I wanted to do an all motor car, you mm. know, because that's where we. We, we came from yeah. and shit, yeah. So 
I got the EK for Big old that unicorn reason. velocity stack. <laughs> <laughs> that thing was the ugliest the thing dude. ever. <laughs> that shit was so cool, though. It was just like everybody was doing that shit at the and time. It's funny because yeah. nowadays people do them with just carbon fiber, st- you know, make it look nicer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And before, it looked so ugly and people were like, no, nah, that doesn't work. But now, if you don't have a lean setup, mm. that's what they do. They use a freaking unicorn looking thing that just looks nicer. Yeah. And it works. Yeah. So... Yeah, our, uh, the one that we did was like, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there was an airboat guy, <laughs> an airboat shop that was by K Phonics. And we just went up to him. He's like, oh, could you do a, an air duct for me? He's like, yeah, sure, whatever. And this was like an airboat welder. And it yep. looked like a fuck, like an AC duct yeah. <laughs> was sticking out of the hood. Yes. And it was like, it was... It was it was fucking ugly. They called it the unicorn. Yeah, they called no, it. We called I still the have pictures of that. Yeah, stupid I, thing. so do I, man. <laughs> I'm like right next to that fucking shit, yeah, man. man. It's so it Look was so ugly. times, dude. But I mean, it worked. It worked. Yeah, if it works, fuck it. Yeah, it actually worked, and it picked up. I think it picked up like five miles an hour. I think that's yeah. what it was. I don't remember exactly, but I know it picked up mile an hour. What was the fastest at the time? It was like they ran a nine. I don't know. Like nine seventies, or I think it was nine seven. Was it? Yeah, and then the RSX was eleven seven. Uh huh. So all motor. Big, yeah, all motor. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was or it was a ten seven on the EK? Because I know there was a ten five index. Yeah, so it could I have think, been ten seven. Yeah, I think it was ten seven. Because I think at that time nine all motor was like insane. Yeah, it, yeah you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Was yeah. So it was ten. Yeah. Because I remember when Danny got into it, mm-hmm. he his car was cut to shit. Mm-hmm. And he got a nine nine. Yeah. So that was a big deal. So yeah, yeah it was ten yeah, seven. It's ten seven. Because we were doing, we were trying to do the ten five index. Exactly. That's right. So um, imagine nowadays, <sighs> fucking B series are doing fucking nine sevens. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, th- th- it's like now it's what nitro. Yeah, nitro, uh, nitro fuel. fuel. I got to learn that recently because I I noticed that everything in Orlando, Puerto Rico, was uh, they were moving on to using fuels, and. I started doing research and it ended up being nitro. And uh, I was like, I got to get with the program. Right. I really, you know, and I had a good friend. I have a good friend that what, gave me the car and he's like, here, have fun with it. Build it. Mm. And I'm like, okay. So we got into it and we started doing, I was like, look, I want to do nitro. And he's like, do it. What do you, how much money do you need? So he would help me with money and, you know, we buy parts here and there and we, we put together something cheap. And I made 400 horsepower on nitro. Fucking so that was cool, you know, with stock rods. Yeah. When back then, when back then we were doing rods and we were breaking them yeah. at what, 370? Yeah. Or 360, whatever we were doing. Mm-hmm. And we were breaking rods. But now, 400 nitro, revving it to 9,500, no problem. Dude, you know? It, it's, the knowledge and technology has come so far, come so far. Like even turbocharging technology, it's like it's, it's become so efficient. Insane, you know. Insane. And I cars mean, are only getting faster and faster. And I mean, faster Danny's and faster. car. Danny's car makes frustrate. Mm. He makes on the dyno, all-wheel drive dyno. He makes fourteen hundred horsepower or fifty-five pounds of boost. Fourteen hundred. Mm. And at the track, we're doing sixty-five, sixty-seven. Jeez. You know, anything past seventy, it cracks the blocks. We kind of know. We but kinda, you're on the cast. You're still on the cast yes, block, right? Yes, on the cast block. Which is insane. Yeah. Well, you know what's funny is that I think that the cast block can take a little bit more. I just feel like um, you just got to go easy with it. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, some of these guys love to just cram boost. Like I listen to these stories now with the guy. With, as, as, since we're in that level, mm-hmm. now people come up to us and talk to us. Mm-hmm. See, so back then before we were, no one said fucking that was, shit to y'all. Yeah, wow, it's funny how that really it, turns around. Yes. So then, so now I'm just, I'm listening to these guys. These guys are launching with 40, 50 pounds of boost front wheel drive, mm-hmm. and they target eighty pounds of boost in first gear. And then they, if they have to, they use traction control, of course, mm-hmm. to, to to control that. And then second gear, if they have to drop it a little bit, they will. But the idea is to keep it up. From the beginning to the end. That was what I've already so heard. So you're just giving everything right out the gate. Right out right the gate. Yeah. And you're using traction control to control the car. Mm. That's it. That, that's how they're doing it. And it's... So they say... Their theory behind it is that they say that it's easier to... Once the turbo's already on, it's easier to keep it on. Like online. Instead of like adjusting Instead it. Instead of adjusting it and going up gradually. Mm-hmm. Because the, 
once you get into a big turbo like that, the shaft's heavier, the wheels are heavier. Mm -hmm. So they take time to pick up that boost. Mm -hmm. So obviously the lag and the housings, you know, yeah. that, but it comes along with the, with the weight on the wheels and the shaft. Mm -hmm. So they, they just want to have it on all the time. So it's just easier. Yeah. So that's why they keep blowing. In my opinion, that's why they keep blowing up. Yeah, motors. You're putting so much stress like constantly. Wait, look, so there's this guy. It's a, yeah, go ahead. Uh, there's this one guy that goes to the track almost every event that I, I've gone to now. He goes. Mm -hmm. It's a big, looks like it's a big company, big truck. They have Lamborghinis. They have all the kind of cars. And then you have one Civic. Don't want to say the Is name. Is it cheapy? No, no, no. no. Actually, <laughs> you know, he gave up on the Honda stuff. No, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. But it's cool that he came from that too. Yeah, and exactly. He's doing R8s and yeah. Lamborghinis and all that. Shout out to Sheepy. But the, these people are doing both. So they kind of keep going. I don't want to say name because then it just... I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. It's just, you know, it, it's going to sound like I'm bashing on them, but yeah. I'm not. It's just looking and learning from what they're doing. Yeah. And they're blowing up three motors, an event. Mm. So it's, if you think about it, let's say that you're, let's say that you're buying the motors and you're not building them, right? And let's, looking at it in that, in that side, right? It's minimum $10,000 a lump block. And you're going through three motors an event. In one event. Yeah. So they have to get ready for the next event and have three motors again because they know they're going to keep blowing them up. And then going to the event is money in itself, too. Yeah. And I mean, you're talking about a semi truck with yeah. three cars inside of them. Yeah. Fuel, Plus tolls, food, workers, workers people there. Everything. Yeah. I mean, it's insane how yeah. much money these guys are spending. And it's wild that Danny, he's honestly, I don't, he's unstoppable. Yeah. You know, right now he's. As. Just him, himself, you know, he obviously has you and the people that is with him, but that motherfucker has grown so much. So much. I remember meeting him. Remember, um, what was this fucking forum? Uh, JDM South. Oh, yeah. JDM South. Like, if you know, <laughs> you fucking know day. JDM South. The good old days. And, dude, everybody was just like yo frustrate frustrate this frustrate that and i was just like dude i want to race this motherfucker yeah, yeah. and then i got my integra running and then first night right off the dyno i went to the the you know like london square yeah and he was there i was like yo i just got off the dyno let's do a run and he's like okay let's go you know whatever <laughs> he don't give a shit yeah he didn't care so you know we raced you know frustrate his name is Yep. You know, it rings bells. It Everywhere rings bells. Everywhere in South Florida, for yeah. sure. Everybody knows him. Frustrate. And his, it, it, you will get frustrated. <laughs> yeah. You will get frustrated. That was his sticker in the back all yeah. the time. Frustrate. Yep. And, dude, to see that to where he is now, he always, he's like, I was, he's the fastest. He's the fastest. He says he's the fastest. He's, and he's yeah. the fucking fastest. He's always been, yeah. yeah. I mean, not always been. He's not it, always been, but he's, He's, he's always there. trying to be the fastest. And yeah, he was out there. Yeah, he, he was, was out there, there doing that shit. Yeah, yeah, he was out yeah. there. I mean, there's always guys that have always had faster cars. Yeah, but, of course. You know, and it's just obviously money was also a factor yeah. back then, you know? Yeah, so but he, so he came from Cuba. Yeah, yeah, you know? he was doing it. He, was he doing came it. from Cuba and they're like, again, this is something that he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And he did. It. Like, if you're passion driven, if you really love what you're doing, you're going to do whatever it takes to fucking do what you're going to do. Yep. That is very true. You know, and then in the long run, you might not see it up front. You might not see, you know, the success or whatever it is that you're trying to go for at first. But if you keep at that shit, eventually it's going to pay off. I mean, like you like you said yeah. earlier, you know, now it's like it's paying off. You know, yeah. you go to a dyno, you just sit on the car and you just do your thing. And, and then you, you, you ride out. Yeah, you know? pretty much. Yeah. 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 It just it's 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 different. It's different nowadays, but it's it's it's. It's good though. It's it's not bad. It's, no, you know. But um, frustrate was a big help for sure. After K Phonics has always been, um, you know, everything for me. You know, I I don't I for don't the community. It. He's been such a positive impact. Yeah, that too. You know, such but a positive for, impact for for my knowledge. Like whatever I gain in knowledge and whatever I've done in in this industry. It's because of him, yeah. you know. I gotta thank him because I mean I, I have to thank a lot of people too, you know. Yeah, but support, yeah. he's he's definitely one of the you know people that you know pushed and for me to keep going. Yeah. Um, there was a time frame where I had moved right, and then he I was tuning with Carell, which big shout out to Carell because Carell has had such an amazing heart nowadays. I mean, well, always, but nowadays he just helps us with whatever we need and. 
he understood the the passion me and him have and what we wanted to do and he he just gave us whatever it is that we needed he was there for us and he is still there for yeah, us that speaks volumes for you guys because you know they obviously trust you yeah you i know? mean you know the computer like learning hot tech was a big thing you know I, I at one point i didn't believe in hot tech but now i use it i used it in my own race car you know <laughs> so it's like it's it's a big thing you know and i, I love I, I love fuel tech too you know it's like i see a lot of people using fuel tech now yeah it's a big it's it's getting big like it's been a big change for yeah. a lot of people it, it works yeah and it's, it's not that expensive either mm -hmm. you know like motec yeah that's a very expensive computer but i know it works too you know it's just people don't use them but yeah i mean like, what's uh frustrate on hall tech he's on a hall tech the next is r3 mm -hmm. so um but before that he was on the elite 1500 and we had all eight injectors working together mm -hmm. um, now we have them separated so now it actually comes in with boost. Okay. So it, it, it it's, you know, Carell showed us everything, did the wiring. Um, he he pretty much set the car up for us, and then we took over from there. But um, even then, in between, he he shows us everything. If I have a question, you'll answer. He's been there a hundred percent. You know, so without him, definitely we couldn't do it. You know, mm -hmm. because you. We don't. We're not, we're not born with the knowledge, you know. Yeah. And it's hard to. Well, yeah, that goes back to like the whole gatekeeping thing, you know. There's there's always going to be somebody there that's more knowledgeable than you are. Right. And if you can't share that knowledge, then you're just gonna hold that to yourself, and then eventually it's never gonna get out there. You're not gonna share that knowledge, so you're not gonna spread that knowledge, and it's gonna die. And you, everything else around it is gonna fall apart. Right. For no reason. Yeah. You know. It's kind of like an ego, selfish way of thinking, right? So I mean, there's certain things you just you want to keep to yourself, you know. I oh understand. yeah, of course. But as far as like, I can't even think of an example right now. But right, as far as like the simplicity, there's always everybody has their little trick, right? Yes. Everybody has their little thing. Like that, obviously. I mean, you know, you keep to yourself. Everyone right. has their style of doing different things, right? But just saying, like majority wise. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, so, so for example, the, uh, we went with an electronic wastegate because we thought that um, the boost drop we were having uh, was because of not, we, were, we, were, we weren't using CO2. So we were using still the boost from the turbo. Mm. So to feed the boost. It's kind of wild. You guys weren't using CO2. No, right? yeah. So then now we're using electronic. And I feel like it doesn't work very yeah. well. I still think that they're behind on that. Mm. And I spoke to, I spoke Was it to like a Turbo Smart or it's a Turbo Smart, yeah, yeah, sixty millimeter mm. um, electronic gate. And I and we spoke to I at a World Cup. We go. I go. I went up to Haltech's booth and I spoke to. I think his name is Nick. Really cool guy. Very helpful. Super knowledgeable. And he sat there with me. I looked at the, he looked at the settings and he's like, he's like, yeah, I helped Carell do this. He's like, but he did it a little different. And I'm like, I just don't see it working. I, I, I obviously, you know, that's the reason why we don't have so much control in first gear mm -hmm. because it you has a lot spin of spin first. Yeah. It yeah. spins all four. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's just now what we're using is we're using a little bit of traction control mm -hmm. to be able to, calm it down yeah so that's what's helping the car now um and then the clutch the clutch valve we finally figured out the clutch valve it was a big ordeal with it <laughs> i can only imagine that's all those slipper clutches and things like that that's always going to be a fucking mission i well, feel we finally got a hang of that valve and that is what has been helping us wow. the most once we got that valve done we're doing 1.2 1.1 60 foot and it was and that's what got us those numbers, you know. That then we started working with the short track because mm -hmm. obviously once you throw third, when you get all the boost, yeah, you'll do it everything, you know what I mean? yeah. But no, it's it's the short track first, second, third. Um, it was it's crucial. It's it's in, it's insane how crucial the short track is yeah. to be able to get that number up top. Mm -hmm. And it's I, again, I learned so many things along the way, and frustrate has been the one that has given me that you know yeah. he served that in a, in a plate and said here learn it you know yeah. and he's always pushed me so you know i have to thank him for that it's just shout out to frustrate dog you're you're a real one 
Yeah, for sure. Him and his wife. <laughs> yeah, no, she's great. Yeah. I remember we'd, we would be at like the meets and everything, and she don't give a shit. She got something to say. She'll, she'll say, it. say it. Yeah. And you better watch out. <laughs> she's a sweetheart. Yeah. She's an absolute sweetheart. 100%. But she will fuck you up <laughs> <laughs> just, just about yes she'll fuck you up verbally yeah. she don't give a shit man yeah, yeah this whole thing their dynamic the, is i mean i love their di- yeah. like those two together are they're great. great yeah they're great they're they're absolutely perfect. great <clears throat> the this whole thing with the gtr and him racing in with the so we we i don't know if you heard we had our we had our street race one time mm. and uh there was an accident the guy other guy crashed I will drive. I will drive Civic with a Mitsubishi. Yes. Yeah. RPT, yeah, yeah. RPT yes, creation. Yes. 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 We we were back there in the Everglades. Yeah. And, I know uh, exactly where that is. That little <laughs> spot. Yeah. It's not so, too far from home. And it and it sucks because the guy came all the way from New York. Yeah. To. to That's unfortunate. Racing. Like. Yeah. I thought that was a, he flipped the car, didn't he? Yeah, he flipped the car yeah. once. It was on one flip, yeah, but still, still fucking yeah, that no, sucks. It, it, yeah, it was. It was definitely not. I'll show you videos after this, but okay. it's, it's definitely crazy. Shit. You know? But ever since then, I told him, this car is not meant to be on the street anymore. No, it's man. too it's fucking like, powerful. And, and it's like, if it wasn't for the for the safety cut, that mm. like we got a coolant pressure cut. Mm. F- funny enough, look at this. Oh, shit. The, the, the coolant pressure cut happened, and that's when the guy kept going, and he crashed. So if it wouldn't have happened, I think they would have... It was it's going to be a good race. It was going to be neck to neck the whole way down. Mm. It was... I think it, it would have collided together. It would have been worse. Yeah, it would have been something. Be both worse. would have been, you know, who knows? Yeah. But whatever it is. Funny enough is that he takes the car apart finally after that because we were going to go to a, uh, an event. I can't remember which one. Mm. Takes it apart and he shows me the head gasket. Shows me a video. He goes, tell me, where do you see it? And I'm like, what are you talking about? There's nothing wrong with the head gasket. He's like, exactly. There's nothing wrong with the head gasket. So how do we get the coolant pressure cut? I said, I don't know. Holy shit. So it's like there was nothing wrong with the head gasket. So it was just like uh, you know, for all those people that believe in something, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. definitely something. Yeah, <laughs> you know, everybody believes that in definitely, something. Yeah, that's. I, I I'm a big like proponent to things like that. You know, things don't happen. Things do happen for a reason, but like those accidental, you know, reasons. Yeah, it kind of leaves you thinking like, what if? Yeah. You know, what if that never came on? You know, he got in a wreck. Well, then think, of, then I'll think about this one. The f- he was supposed to race him with the street car first, the white mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. And we had a nitrous leak. And he's like, oh, I have a nitrous leak. I'm like, don't open the bottle. Leave, just leave it closed. We'll have a conversation with the guy. We'll, we'll figure it out. And then um, it's a very small leak. So we'll, we'll open the bottle when you're ready to, to race. And then nothing will happen because it's just a very small leak. We had already opened the bottle and we saw we heard the leak. Nitrous. Um, so we walk away and we, we close the bottle, walk away. We we talk to the guy. We try to, you know, oh, give me a car, give me this, whatever it was. We try to get set up the race. Yeah. And maybe about 30 minutes later, we go to the race and we go turn the car on and it does a nitrous backfire. <laughs> it bends the throttle body plate closed. Shit. So then we couldn't race. So then he's like, oh, we have plenty of time. I'm not in a rush. Try to see if you can bend it back. Okay, so we took the throttle body out. We took the fucking... We were just banging it with pieces of wood and all kinds <laughs> of shit to try to get it to at least yeah. somewhat closed. Even if it idles high, who cares? It's just yeah. fucking race, you yeah. know? Wait, it's right, wide open. They don't matter at that yeah, point. Yeah, you know, yeah. so that, that we just wanted it to race. Yeah. And as we're bending it back, we do a test hit to make sure half of the blade, you know, as a circle, half the blade breaks, breaks off. off. Mm. Because, you know... Yeah, the bending. Yeah. Malleable, yeah. So, there goes number one. The, <sighs> the plate. Yeah. The plate breaks. We can't race. And then... These are all like little signs. It was like telling you like, don't... So, and that's when I tell him. I said, yeah. I think it's I think it's already like, a listen, big sign. Listen to, you know... Listen to those things. Yeah, listen to those things. Yeah. You know, be let's very stop aware racing at the street. Yeah. You know, build another car if you want to. Something simpler. Yeah. Play along with, the, you know, with something. Those, with, those cars are fucking powerful, man. Wait. Any little thing. Dude... And the, and the track you have barricades, a lot of in the sticks. Though you have trees. Yeah, I mean he knows poles. himself. He knows himself anyways because yeah. he had a blue hatch and he crashed and tore. Yeah, him. I remember. You know, I so remember. That, I was like a six hundred horsepower. Yeah, B series. You know, uh, yeah. 
It was yeah, those were fun times too with that car. Yeah. He had a lot of he had a lot of fun with that car yeah. until he crashed it. Oh, course. he he was racing out there every day. I would always see videos of him out there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can go we can go on and on and on with with him and all kinds of stories. But there's also a lot of people that uh, we don't men- we, that we haven't mentioned that were out that always go out there too. To this day, they still go out and race, but they have newer cars. Yeah. You know, so you know, it's just time. You know. Things change, and that's it. Just people change, cars change, and then that's why I want to change into different cars. I gotta do diff- something else. Try looking into the B fifty eight stuff. I mean, that yeah. that seems to be very popular now, and that seems also to be the new two J, right? If you want to call it that, because right. like the N fifty four and fifty five platform, that was pretty much a like po- like a pre B fifty eight. You know, right. they did a lot of experimentation with that, and they, those things handle a lot of power. Right. The only mm-hmm. thing I don't like is that their their uh, their exhaust ports are yeah. whack. Yeah. But it's just like the new Hondas now. Yeah. You know, almost everything now is exhaust yeah. port is one exhaust port. Yeah. So, so well, I the learned, new the new B fifty uh, the new B fifty eights they have the six ports now too. Oh, they do. Yeah. The newer oh. the newer generations are six port. So which was the one that had the prior the earlier B fifty eights I think had the single the single ports yeah so that's probably why it's so much better now yeah well, see I gotta I gotta learn yeah I have to learn on these things. yeah look into that man because it's if you want to experiment with my girl's car just let me know <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get the right equipment for it that's for sure to yeah. be able to flash the computer and learn how to tune them and and go from there I I have to find them I just I honestly just haven't looked mm. to see what it is that it takes I've just been so busy with my what I'm doing and. You know, keep going. Yeah. But um, I do have more free time now. And I actually, um, I have a girlfriend now that it's helping me with the shop again. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of letting it be towards hers and what she wants to do. Um, Where's your shop at? It's on Bird Road and um, 72nd Avenue. Is it the it's same inside one? There. It's it where Ponds, what? pretty much where Ponds, Ponds is. is. Okay. Just another down the street, I guess. Or Lincoln Brewery, like that. Yes, yeah. back okay. there. Gotcha. Like, yeah, I just keep going along the roads and it's back there. So um, I'm face. You can you can see the highway. Yeah, I can see Santa's and Channel Forest or okay. whatever it's called now. But yeah. yeah. Oh, Santa's man! When they closed that shit down for COVID, I was like, bro, this is my childhood. Why are you doing this? They have it open up in high. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but they still, have something man. else now. It's like some Wonderland some winter Wonderland, shit. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't but Santa's Enchanted Forest, like yeah, that was it. Shout out Miami, ninety nine, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it was the shit. But as far as like this whole talk, you know, with like frustrate, like racing in the streets, I know some GTRs are you know talking some shit. Yeah, I mean, so it's always gonna be that way. So that the um, that part, uh, other podcast, um, they had him on. I think it's called Work uh, Workhorse. Mm-hmm. I think that's what their shop is called. The shop, uh huh. Workhorse. Um, I think so. I can't remember now, but I think that was the shop name. They were doing the podcast with the other guy, and it was meant to be the call out was meant to be for someone in Maryland. Mm-hmm. Um, his name is Los Broke. Mm-hmm. Um, it's another all wheel drive hatch that's very fast on the street. Um, which now he's starting to you know race in the track and trying to prove himself. You know because mm-hmm. he is fast because that car is fast. Yeah. So I had an event. Uh, I had I had um hosted an event with Dreamfest. Mm-hmm. And we did an event in uh, North North Carolina, yeah, North Carolina, and that's where I met Los Broke, um, and they raced another all wheel drive car um, called um, Wow, I can't remember the name now. I always forget dumb things like this, but that was carry, me all the time. Carry too. out boys, the carry out boys, the carry okay, out yeah. Boys. And they bet it. So I think it was like sixteen thousand dollars a side, mm. and they and that's why just seeing them race. Oh, this this happened just recently. Yeah, right? last year. Yeah, this last year. Now at that that event, mm. um, and um, just seeing the white hatch run, both of them because they're both fast. But you know, he comes from the street. Yeah, and to for him to do something, whatever he did, that's could, all they do up there. Yeah, that's all know. they do up there is the street race, and that car's fast. And a lot of people underestimating it. Mm. And I, anyways, back to you know the GTR thing. They called they called him out because he is fast yeah. and he's worth racing. Yeah. So it was meant to be for him, but then they were talking but he said about any frustrated. Honda. Yes, he said any Honda. That's the problem. Yeah, don't say any Honda. Yeah, because <laughs> well, like Speed Factory could be like, oh, well, you know. Yeah, but then they want to do it on the street. But then they yeah. they also want 
like frustrate and people for yeah. them to travel up. Mm -hmm. That's always the bargain. It's like you're calling us out. You come down. Yeah. Right. I would think that's that way. usually how it goes. But that's the thing. So then the correction was, hey, no, the, the call out was for Los Broke, which is he's in Maryland. Yeah. So that's, you know, it's and then, easier, obviously. And then Danny, being and, Danny. And then, no, well, the thing is that then he got mentioned afterwards because it was just, they were in the topic. Mm -hmm. So then, of course, he's, that's when any Honda came from, you know. Mm -hmm. And then Danny, of course, being Danny, you know, he answered back. Yeah. And then Texas Killer gets involved in there, mm -hmm. which I think, I think he got confused. Yeah. The thing is that, Frustrate. I know frustrated when he posted videos. He just wanted to show the, the GTR guys that he already killed. Uh, he already killed one of the eight. fastest. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so street that was, GTRs. I don't think it was meant to to call out um, Texas Killer. Yeah. It was just to show. Yeah. That he's done it already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, to show off. It's like whatever. a little. Yeah. Yeah. So then, then he got involved and he calls him out and it's like a whole big ordeal. But yeah, then, anyway. this whole, they should do like a Honda GTR shootout at a track. Yeah, right? I mean, that would be great. That would actually be pretty fucking cool. Yeah, I think so. I even thought about, so for example, we're going to we're going to Honda Day. But do like a no prep type deal if you want to yeah. like make it street. Yeah, these... It's so difficult to satisfy every people. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It, it, it's, it's a lot of personalities. Getting into doing the events, yeah. um, it's how I learned how hard it is to satisfy different types of races you're part of like organizing dream fest and everything as well so i me and tony Tulit mm -hmm. um got into doing events locally for to get away from street, street racing yeah because we would go to spots i want to get i want to get a hold of mario too i actually just spoke to him the other day really yeah because he wants to do his events now at Immokalee. Okay. So he told me to go speak to, to see if I can speak to the owner. Oh, shit. But uh, of the track. Yeah. And I haven't been able to reach out to him right now. He's a little hard to get to. Yeah. Um, he's also very hard to please. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's it's a little hard to, to deal with that. But um, yeah, it just, you know, it's just to do, to do events. What I did was with, we wanted to do events, get them off the streets, and then we started doing that. We did one event. It came out amazing. Mm -hmm. um, it was a shootout, right? Obviously, it came out amazing because it's 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 the Immokalee. It's more like the street. Yeah. So if you scrape it and you actually don't prep it, mm -hmm. it is more like the street. That's the one that you just did with like the, right the carry out boys and everything. Or no, oh no, just all oh, today. That's just that's today's track. Oh, Immokalee, okay, Immokalee, Florida, right here. Gotcha. So. Um, so that start that went really well. So then we wanted to do something bigger and do bring people from the north, because the guys from the, the the guys in Orlando are the most people we have to race here in Florida. Mm. Miami doesn't have that many people. Yeah. It's what me, Savon, uh, Frustrate, Pipa. Like you can count them with your both hands. Yeah, yeah. Not, that's not that many people. Not mm. even both. I think one hand. Yeah. So, um, or that are fast enough to be able to race front wheel drive, no prep shootouts. You mm. know. Or even all will drive, no prep shootouts. Um, then you have the rest of them in Orlando. Orlando is where most racers are at. So those guys wanted to race guys in New York, New Jersey, Maryland, all that stuff, Connecticut. They want to race people from up there. Mm. But they, a lot of these guys don't want to travel. So we tra so what we came up with an idea of was we'll meet halfway and we'll race. And the halfway point was North Carolina or South Carolina. Yeah. And they were even the North guys were even willing to drive to Georgia. Because they wanted to race. They wanted to do a North versus South East Coast thing. Yeah. And because it was a cool thing. I saw the promotion, for, the promoting for that. That was a really good promoting. It was good. It was yeah. really good. It, and, and and I needed help because I couldn't find a track. And I came to Nicole and Nicole Dreamfest. She she offered the help and we made it happen. Yeah. And it was, it was a great, I think it was a great event. It, everything went. The last like, Dreamfest event I went to was before... It was before COVID. Like I think it was one of the last ones they did. Was it a car West show? Palm. Oh, West Palm. No, they did. It was roll racing. I had the S2 yes. out there. Yes. I did a few hits but over there. I think there. she used to call it something else. Was it Dreamfest? It was Dreamfest. Oh, wow. I think it was like the first, one of the first Dreamfests. Yeah, I think that's when she was probably transitioning to, to Dreamfest. I don't know. I, I I don't really follow too much. All I did was work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just so, tuned fucking cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just, I lost a lot of, I lose a lot of time because of that. You yeah. Know, because I don't get to follow everything. So I don't really know. But um because there used to be something else I, I can't remember the name of it it probably was something else i just i i, I remember it being dream fest okay 
So yeah, because it was like the whole do- thing. I think they tagged my car when I had it there. So I, I believe I believe it was Dreamfest. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that she did a lot of things because yeah. I, I, we went to a lot of car shows um, with her, or yeah. a lot of the guys went to car shows yeah. because of her. Uh-huh. So um, her and Chris, but um, yeah, I mean, you know, after after that event, that's it. I was like, I can't, I can't do another event. It's just too much. These guys, it's hard to satisfy everybody, and yeah. I want to satisfy everybody. Yeah, because I I want to be able to the racers to have fun because I know what it is to be a racer. Yeah. I know what you feel because you're close to me. I know what, you know, Fulano is yeah. close. You know, I know what they feel. I know I, I, I receive it. So yeah, I yeah. want to be able to apply that to everybody to, in an event. You're very like empathetic with, like with all that. You want so everybody I, to have a good time. Yeah. You know, so, and then I wanted to, to do it right. And I thought that the North versus South was really great. Yeah. And it was a great touch what they what Chris and uh, Nicole did with the flags, the shirts. It yeah. was really, really great. Um, it just you know, it, it's just hard to satisfy people. Yeah, you know, and people want some people want a eighth mile no prep. Some of them are you know the North guys always want quarter mile no prep. Mm-hmm. But it is hard when you have a very powerful car because up top you're giving it so much power that you also need to sticky. Stop. <laughs> well, oh, okay, the sticky stuff. But then you also I need some of that sticky stuff in the stop in the shutdown. Yeah, they actually apply. I didn't know they apply a like little bit grip. of VHT yeah. out there because you want it to grip when you're shutting down because yeah. it's just as rough. Yeah, I didn't know that. So again, you learn a lot, learn a lot of things with you know when you when you do when you when you're not into it and you get into it, you learn a lot of things. I think you should do another one. Honestly, I. I I want to. I really do. Yeah. Um, I mean, like actually, learn, like learn from like the last one, right? And see, you know, what you. So could what I want to do is, I actually wanted to since I I heard from Mario the other day, mm-hmm. and I hear him that he wants to do some. And he he says let's do. You could take care of the shootout stuff. So I was like, okay, you know, that's that would be cool because then we can use Street Racing May Save as a platform, mm-hmm. and then we just do the shootouts on the side. Shout out County Line, fucking man, dude. I wish. I miss miss County Line so much. I wish, but he lost it. He couldn't do it. Yeah. Now they Not shut him. it down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as far as like stream racing being safe and everything. I mean, he does it here in Homestead. Yeah, but that's I mean, the like road circuit. course stuff. Yeah. yeah, you know. But that's that's also pretty good though to get people out. That's yeah, a nice little event. Yeah, it is actually. But where like where it came from as far as like straight line street racing, you know, that's where the whole thing was. The whole. That'd be cool to get him here. To talk to him, yeah. He, he has no, I definitely, lot. I definitely want to like hit him up because it, it it'll be nice to to hear what he has to say because yeah. that's why he transitioned from drag ra- drag racers to, to circuit to circuit because mm. it's hard to to, to satisfy so, hi, everybody. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. Now yeah. he was a big. Um, he helped us a lot in, in K Phonics and everything. Like we supported him. Yeah, and he, and he supported us. And I have pictures we went of that to his too. Event. Yeah, when the RSX was at that event, dude, I fucking love that RSX, man. You know that that carbon hood was like the one of one. I still have that. Okay. Yeah. I still have that. You still hood. have the hood? It's cut up. Yeah. It's cut the fucking yeah, shit. Because <laughs> I've cut it up. It was like do... all motor and yeah. then turbo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've done I all kinds of I, shit yeah, with yeah. it, but I have it yeah. because it's, it, to me, it was memories. Yeah. You know? and, and it was. That's cool. That's and fucking it was one on one. You know, the guy wanted to buy it back. Did he? Yeah. And I told him no. No. I told him no. I don't, I don't yeah, want to sell it because I want to hang it up in the shop when I have my own shop. Yeah. I never did it, but. You should do like an autograph board on it or some shit. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's all dried up now. Yeah. But it, I mean, it was a really cool, cool hood to yeah. to have. You yeah. know, it was. It she was, was light. He as does have another shit. one too. Uh, about three years ago, maybe uh-huh. is when I reached out to him, and he says I still have one left. He wanted a lot of money for it, though. He wanted a lot of money for that thing at the time. I remember. <laughs> so JP, dude, he's he's about his he's about his money. I think he, but he wanted like almost three grand for it yeah and jp's like there's no way i'm paying for three grand for this. <laughs> i think he talked him down to like 1500 or yeah, some shit like well that. the that's what he wants now for that hood for, for that, that one for that last one. Oh shit He's, well i think it was jp's and uh-huh. then he made another one and no one bought it yeah so then he started making it to like other cars yeah so those are the ones he kind of like yeah grew grew with with the other cars yeah you know? i think he he just charged that much at the time because it was like one of his first ones and he put a lot of work into it and like this whole like engineering you know carbon lingo that he was like telling us this aerospace technology yeah yeah and it, the hood was light as shit super i think it's like six or seven pounds 
Yeah, I don't remember how light it was, but it was very light. Yeah, you can literally pick it up with your just two like fingers. with your just like that. Yeah, it was it was a good, really good hood. Yeah, I used it in my friend's all motor RSX because we wanted to drop some weight. Mm-hmm. And it's like that was the easiest thing. Like, put this on, <laughs> it's gonna work, Fuck and it worked. You know, cut up the car, put the uh, hood on it, and it worked. But um, man, damn, an all motor RSX car. Like, why would you do that though? <laughs> I know a lot of people do shit just to like, you know, they'd be like, oh, I'm the fastest all-motor RSX. Or... You know, we're still on that list, you know, that, right? Are you? Uh, For the RSX? Yeah, well, you, us, because that was us. Oh, fuck. We're I still in no that idea. list. I think we're number seven out of top ten. Nice. So. Fucking years well, later. I think what? We were number one, I think, at one point. At one point, yeah. And then, you know, obviously. Obviously when, through the times and yeah. shit. But I imagine still, since what, 2012 yeah. to now? And we're still, what, number Holding seven? Holding that shit down? Hell yeah, that's awesome, but dude. But it was 11-7, I think is what it was. Yeah. It's still there. That uh, list is still there. Fucking RSX. Dude. And it's funny because I was fighting for that list to be um, fastest um, turbo uh-huh. RSX, but it was all one list. Yeah. But we're still in number seven on motor. motor. Number seven, I think that's what it is. That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's crazy to see it because you can see the name K Phonics. K Phonics. Yeah. And you're like, who the fuck is K Phonics? <laughs> we had a thing at one point. There was a there was a K Phonics at one point. Yeah, yeah. It was such great times, man. But what what do you got going on now as far as like the future? So future was what I mentioned earlier is with my girlfriend. We want to open up again. I want to di- buy a dyno. I actually want to buy it right now. I don't want to buy a new a used one. So it takes it's gonna take me a little bit because I gotta work on getting a loan and all that stuff. So um, Miami Dade County requires two certifications. ASEs or AATI to be able to keep it, which mm-hmm. is the same problem I had when JP wanted to close the shop and ASCs stay with and it. everything. Yeah, I needed ASEs, and it was exactly the same one. So now you have to do like get ASEs, and I just kept prolonging it and prolonging yeah. it, and it bit me in the ass, which is the other reason as to why I sold the dyno because mm. it was just easier to get rid of it because of my mom's situation. But, yeah, but definitely that was I'm glad she's doing better though, too. Yeah, thank you, I appreciate it. But yeah, and, you know, it's like. So I want to work on getting that um, this AAC certification, which I should have done a long time ago. I, I, I feel everybody, I, I, I don't have my ASCs. I work for local government as a fleet mechanic. And no ASCs. And no ACs. You want to hear something funny? Uh-huh. Anything above Broward yeah. or out of Broward or Miami-Dade County it's not does not required. require ASCs. Yeah. You can literally open up a shop and have no experience or anything as long as you just pay your dues and your licenses whatever license or whatever they require yeah and you can open up a shop yeah i think just here in miami it's everywhere there's a mechanic shop every every, corner every corner yeah you know and a lot of people you know they do things not to code let's say right you know and then fucks it up for everybody else exactly well yeah that's what it all yeah it's been like that for a long time it's been like that for a very long time yeah so same thing with broward county Mm. but anything else Outside of that, does not require. Shit. I've, that's why I wanted to move to Orlando. Yeah. Well, technically, it was called um, Haines City. Uh-huh. Somewhere in the middle of Florida. So. Uh-huh. How <laughs> was it in Cape Coral? Cape Coral was nice. I loved it. Uh, it was peaceful. Mm. Now it's just it's full just of... It's like a lot of... As far as business-wise. So business uh, was a little slow at the time for mm. me back then. Uh, that's why I would always come to Miami to work, which is why I moved when I got divorced. And... Um, but now it's actually getting much better. Yeah. But I have to get into other types of cars. Yeah. So like the shop that I use over there, they do muscle cars, mm-hmm. you know, V eight stuff. Yeah. Mostly Chevy, you know. But I mean, they. Dude, why don't you get into the Coyote shit? Coyotes was was the next thing. Mm. I'm a little behind on that, but the yeah. trucks are awesome. Yeah. The 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 F one fifties. Yeah. Stupid. The, ridiculous. Stupid. Was it midnight? Midnight, midnight, something I can't remember, but they flying. They're with those fucking trucks. so and fast. even the Mustangs. Yeah, they're just flying. It's, it's they're V eight K series, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. So it kind of, it kind of be like an easy transition for you. Well, the problem is it's probably more involved, obviously. Yeah, but, there's yeah. a lot. I mean, so so I've noticed that people are starting to use fuel tech mm. on as a jumper. They use a jumper and they put fuel tech on the Coyote. So anything, and then when they when they start doing high horsepower, they get rid of the VTC. So yeah, they I they I see the caps on. Yeah, I've so then that. that's it. Once you do that, for me, is cake. After that, because we're learning the VTC is a problem, mm-hmm. especially with the stock ECU. 
So, but then again, I just don't have the time to sit down and figure out all those things. Yeah. So that's why I don't know. You don't see me doing it because I just don't have the time. Mm -hmm. So the same thing goes with the new the new Chevy stuff. You know, like the torque management mm -hmm. uh, tables. Is it? You know, I don't. I haven't learned them. So it's a you know it's a learning process, and you know I just have to get into it. That's it. Just have to push. Yeah. But um, so for your future, definitely want to open up another shop. Um, if the, if it doesn't work out here, because uh, the other word is that the they they're not allowing new shops to open in Miami Dade County. They don't want new shops to to open up. Yeah. You know they don't want you to have a full blown shop. Yeah. So we can do and it. If they do, they're gonna charge you. No, a, they just same amount. No, they don't. Oh, want not you. at all. They oh. don't want you at all. They don't. You know, and in the area I'm at. We're on top of some type of water play, whatever, bull crab. So the environmental department does not want anything to do with fluids. So it's going to be hard. But then there's always a loophole for everything. Yeah. So now we just got to find the loophole, yeah. which is usually uh, having a dealer license. And then we're, we're building cars to sell. And that's it. Just say you have a bunch of EV cars. I'm just working on Teslas. <laughs> you know, they don't have any chemicals or anything. Right, yeah. You know, it's environmentally thing, friendly. These inspectors come and uh -huh. they think they know everything. Yeah. You oh, know? no, of course, yeah. You know? It's like the the last guy that I had that was bugging for the dyno, I was like, dude, I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing this, it's off-road tune, like, it's off-road stuff. Yeah. And like, it, technically, these guys are not supposed to be on the street with these tunes. Mm -hmm. That's their problem, not mine. Yeah. But if you think about it, I'm not doing anything to do with... The, the street yeah it's all for racing mm -hmm. so what is that you re, you know you want you know and he's like oh i want you to have perf uh engine performance i'm like but it has nothing to do with what i'm doing mm -hmm. it does in some ways yeah because if you actually read the book and you start learning yeah. and you do that ase it has a little bit of to do with tuning and stuff yeah so i'm um, you know and then he got pissed off because i challenged him on it and mm -hmm. i was like how who 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 is the one that makes that decision that I need that ASE? It was me. I say, who are you? <laughs> and so how come I can't go higher? These code you? people are just something else. Yeah. Man. So then I, I I I tried going higher. I yeah. tried going to to the department and sign up and all that stuff. And I, it's like, well, how can I challenge this guy on what ASE I really need? It's like, oh, let me talk to the master technician here and the thing. He's like, you have a master tech that works in the office. How does that How does that work? Yeah. And so you. He's like, oh yeah, he's he's taking all the tests and he's a master tech. So just just because he knows how to test and knows how to, he doesn't know how the real world works. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. Like have common sense. Yeah, they're just they're just winging it. Yeah, that's what they're doing. And it's it was very. Well, they're going every, It's it's by the book. They're just they have like blinders on, so right. they can't think outside of like. Hmm, yes. Well, what you're saying kind of makes sense, and it's no, like they don't know, care. They don't give a shit. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, yeah, they're doing their job. It's that a, like authoritarian thing, right? Yeah. I mean, they're just doing their job, yeah. right? So it was frustrating though, because yeah. I was I was trying to challenge everybody mm. when it came to trying to as you should, you know. But as it didn't should. work out. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. It didn't work out. But I, you know, I started studying, and then I, you know, I was going tra uh, traveling to Guatemala last year a lot, and uh, I getting I would I would study on the airplane, and then so every time I would come back, I went to go take a test, and then I went to go take the test. And I would reschedule every time. Mm. Finally, I took the test and I failed it by two points. Oh, God damn it. That's when I gave up. Yeah. And I was like, I'd be so this. frustrated too. I'm like, forget this. I can't do this shit. Fucking two points. I hate school. I hate studying. Me too. All that. Like, I'm just not it for it. I'm not. I'm, I never it's not was. for me. It's not for me. So that's why. That's another reason why I also take. Uh, takes me longer to learn things because. Um, I just don't want to sit down and, and read. Yeah. And learn. You know? Yeah. But I learn on. Hands on. Hands, hands on. Yeah. yeah, that's just easier. Yeah. You know? So if you bring me a car, I'll learn it. Yes. That's just the way it is. And it'll probably be the fastest Honda K series <laughs> out there. Who yeah, knows? right. <laughs> it is insane how that works. Yeah. You know, because it's like you're talking about someone that's done everything backyard. Yeah. Versus everybody that's doing it the right yeah. way. Yeah. I mean, you always the top ten list has a mix of both. Yes. You know? Yeah. But it's insane how we are all the way in the top. With the fastest K series, yeah. or you know, there's a whole controversy about fastest and quickest. Yeah, what the fuck is the difference? Yeah, and it's like whatever it is that you want to call. Everyone it. is just trying to like, like pick and choose what what is technically 
Yeah. The fastest. Right. So for for example, I was talking to Fred the other day, Durf, mm. and he's like, I'm just gonna shoot for the 200 mile an hour record. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, that's actually pretty crazy because 200 miles an hour in a Civic, it's insane. When I see Speed Factory do like 220 or some shit, I'm like, how the fuck? Yes. That's insane. Insane. And then yeah. you see the pictures at the shutdown and the yeah. wheels in the back are up in the air. Yeah. It's, a, it's insane. These guys are crazy. Yeah. Seriously, they are. And I think I would have done it. I think I would do it too. Yeah. <laughs> once you're in there, once you're in there, yeah. it's, it's different. Yeah, for sure. You know? Yeah. But then you start thinking about, so funny enough is that that 7-1 pass that we finally did, mm -hmm. he was so excited, so jittery. I was like, okay, well, let's go back. Let's look at the log and let's see if we can get a 7-0. You let off early. He's like, I let off early because I'm scared. I don't want to go back. Oh, shit. I don't want to do it again. He told me, I don't want to do it again. Let's go home. I'm like, you serious? He's like, I'm scared. That's crazy. He pulled a shoot early. For Danny day. to say that? Yeah. He was scared. First time I ever hear him say, I'm scared. Yeah. I don't want to go back. Wow. Yeah. I would have never thought he would say that. He says that the, the ride is not, the ride there is not the problem. The, it's a shutdown. It's the knowing what the shutdown does to you. If you look at the last video of Danny racing or that one pass, the last pass, he's already waiting once he throws fifth, he's already there, oh, there waiting because he just wants the pass to be over. Yeah. And he pulled the shoot early. So Damn. we don't know if the car has a faster time or not. We really I mean, don't. is he going to try it out eventually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's just there at that time. It was so he just wants like to find the driver. Um, he definitely doesn't want to be in the car mm. um, as much as he used to be. I, I feel like at that at his level already, the what he's done so much, he's a driver. Yeah, He's yeah. been a driver for years. Yes. So it, it it gets to a point where you're just like, there's more things in life that is precious. You know, he has a family. He just yep. got a new place. You yep. know, there's so much other things. Like, it's what happened almost with him at the the street race with the the 4G yeah. Civic. Yeah. You know, you never know what could happen. Yes. You know, yeah. and it takes real courage to step back and be like. Okay, this is this is getting too crazy. It's getting too much for me. I've already done so much, you know. I've gotten to where I would like to be. Maybe this is not for me right now. Like, still do your shit. Yeah, you know. Definitely. But you know, it takes a it takes a lot of courage to be like, yo, that shit scared the fuck out of me. Yeah, you know, like he he was saying, because I would never thought he would say that. To, yeah, to you, or to anybody, anybody. You know, because he's always been that racer, hardcore racer. Yeah, in the street, no matter where. Yeah, he'll take it on challenge on anybody. You know? Yeah. So that's why he didn't want to let that challenge go. You yeah. Know? And he's willing to race though. He's yeah. he's willing to race on the street mm -hmm. and bring the car back out. Definitely need to do a that you know a nice hit and make sure we get the car. <laughs> yeah, right. get that shit. Because the car's squared. turned the fuck up. Yeah. Because obviously at the track and it. it it hooks. Yeah. So on the street, it's not going to hook. No. So the wheelbase is not there, you know? It's it's just... And like as far as... It doesn't the, work. I don't know. Maybe the technology will will get better, improve a pod. But like if they do the all-wheel drive with like an extended oh, wheelbase, because, yeah. you know, I know like FCS, they do. Yes. They try to bring the wheelbase back That'd be out. That'd great. You know, That'll with help. an all-wheel drive setup, you know? Yeah. But I don't know how that would work either. Yeah, because they're using the diff... The diff mount yeah. on the strongest part of the car. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know how it's going to work. Yeah. But I guess we'll find out because there's a lot of people with different ideas that we don't even ever will ever think about. So yeah. and you never know. But it's, it's definitely, on, you know, a learning curve for everything. Yeah. But is Danny going to do anything with the GTR discussion or? So he wants to race. So the, I, I threw out an idea, which I don't know if they're going to listen or not, was to speak to. Uh, you remember uh, Honda Day, which is mm -hmm. called H Day now. H Day. Um, Javier, mm -hmm. the guy that makes the events. Yes. Javier or Ortega. Uh -huh. I guess um, to speak to him in a personal level. He's a very eccentric individual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but to speak to him in a you know in a personal level and yeah, say, yeah. hey, instead of bringing these race into the street, let us do a uh, oh, what is that called? Like an exhibition run. For the crowd. Oh, like an exhibition. Okay. You know, for the crowd. Yeah, yeah. And make it an exhibition run for the yeah. crowd. Bring Gringo too. Yeah, bring. Well, I'm, I don't know if he's gonna come or not, but yeah. No, I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it'll be it'll be great to do, you know, that to do that at the track in Maryland. No one has to really travel. Well, frustrated would have to travel, but yeah. if one travel, one 
you know, one thing. But the guy is so persistent in being racing on the street. You know, obviously his car runs seven twos, so it's a really it's gonna be a really good race. Yeah, it's the yeah. world to race on the street on oh, the yeah. track. But on the street, it's definitely gonna be different. Yeah. Because there's you know, you don't hook at the street, it's just different. Yeah. So their wheelbase is a lot nicer. So the cars And they also have weight. Yes. Behind them. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, and Danny has been dropping a lot of weight in the car, which yeah. is what's helping also with the times. Yeah. So you know, I just I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna work. I really don't know. Yeah. It's just Curious I don't know. To see. Yeah, you know, it'd be, it's definitely nice. It would be cool to see what the outcome would be on that race. Hmm. Um, what happens now and what sucks is that um, the internet trolls too much. Well, yeah, of course. You know, so if he loses, it's it, you know, like that. Let's say if he beats the GTR. Oh, okay, he beat the GTR. It's awesome, you know. Like a lot of people will celebrate, mm. but if he loses with the GTR, it's like they're gonna find an excuse. Everything, nah, it's just not an excuse. It's just it'll find everything to make fun of him. Yeah, it, because of the level he's at, yeah. and they're just gonna make fun of him. Yeah, especially if it comes to oh, it's like they'll say like oh, it's a full blown race car versus a f uh, full interior AC it's GTR. A, it's you know. lose lose for him. Yeah, because of that be same lose, reason. Lose. Yeah, because if he does win, oh, it's a full race car. Yeah, you know. Versus a street car. Yeah. But um, but they race with the parachute too. So yeah. they are a race car as well. Yeah. So I don't know. It's just, it's, it's like, it's a lose-lose for both at the end of the day. Yeah. So and it's a lot of money. It, you have to travel. It's know? entertaining. That's, that's the only thing that yeah, it is. Yeah, it's definitely entertaining for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I don't know how entertaining it is for, for Danny, but... Yeah. Um, he does have to take days off from work. You know, obviously he does giveaways and people think he doesn't work, but it actually takes, takes a time. lot of work. It, it takes does, time. Yeah. He's, he loves You're to You're looking prepare. for the market. You have to take care of, you know, the cars. Yes. You know, he likes to make sure the cars yeah. are 100 before he gives them away. Yeah. So that I give a him lot away. of people don't see the work. Yes. They just see, you know, what's happening in, in front of you. So, but he's a very busy individual. Is when it comes to that because he gets every car prepped. So every guy, every car that he buys, he ships them home, and they're touched by him first. Then he gives them away. Mm. So it's a personal thing. People, people that win the cars don't real. I don't think have realized how personal it is to win that car mm. because it's also it comes along with a lot of love behind it. Yeah. So not only he's buying an expensive car, he's also you know fixed. Fixing whatever it needs yeah. to. He's, putting, it he's giving it attention. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's not like you're just buying a car and leave it there where it is and do the giveaway and then ship it from there from there to the other guy. Yeah. And then when you get the car, the car is like a jalopy. You know, you yeah. have bolts missing or it's misfiring. <laughs> it's not running properly. Right. And he you got know. he gets cars like Even though that. it's like a... F you, even though it's like essentially a giveaway car, you get it back like you're expecting something. Right. You know? Yeah. I mean, he's gotten, he's gotten fucked over where he has to buy cars and he has to sell them. Yeah. Like, he fixes as much as he can and then sell the car because mm -hmm. he just doesn't think that they're worthy for the giveaway. Yeah. So I give him that, you know? Like, he, he tries his best to have the best cars. Yeah. You know, so just everybody's different in the way that it comes to building cars. So. No, for sure. <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's a very broad spectrum of how cars are built. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, you know, I mean... He has fun doing it though, you know. It's definitely less work than what he used to do. You yeah, know? Uh, you know he used to drop transmission, drop motors for people, yeah. make money that way. Now it's doing, HTR. Yeah, HTR. Yeah, that was that was it back then, you know. Mm -hmm. So I had a couple transmissions he built for me. Yeah, I mean yeah. he's done all of them. He still do it to this day. If I ever need one, he does it for me. Yeah, you know him and Pipa. Mm -hmm. They always help me out with, when it comes to the transition. No, they're hell, hell of a good. That's why I never learned because I have them. <laughs> so, but that's I want to nice, learn. Though. It's like nice, little convenient, you know. Yeah, it's always nice to have people like that around too. Yeah, for sure. You know, you know? I mean, you got a bunch of shit going on for yourself too. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We it's, can't do it all. <laughs> I wish. I yeah, tell, honestly, I wish. But you know, it's just it, you know every car that I do on, on the dyno, it's. Or or meeting the person and at the dyno and then going over the car making sure everything's you know on point that all takes time yeah you know it's like some of these guys don't realize that you know that like how much time it takes to make sure it comes out right yeah so it's important to have the car ready which that's always been the battle since day one mm -hmm. is having the car ready before you come to the dyno and 
you know, it, it never happens, but you know, the the ones that the ones that actually have the cars ready are the ones that already have experience. Yeah. And the ones that have been doing it for a long time. Yeah. So Yeah, a lot of people that just like started getting into, you know, cars or haven't, you know, or tuning the car for the first time, they might not be very knowledgeable. But, you know, also do your research too before doing stuff like that because you're wasting the tuner's time you're wasting your time you know there's it's a business at the end of the day too you know so take into consideration that you know a tuner could be just you know on their laptop you know again they don't see the work that you're putting in they only see what's in front of them it is stressful yeah it is mind consuming yeah sometimes i just when i'm driving home i just want to shut down the phone yeah and go home and go to sleep. Yeah. Because it's, it is very... Do some yoga, man. <laughs> fucking... Maybe. Maybe, yeah, I should. Fucking do some I started, meditation. Hey, listen, shit. Yeah. I, listen, I started doing diet now ever since December 1st. Mm. No, December 3rd. I started dieting because it, it, my my uh, ankles and knees were getting swollen out of nowhere. And I lost 30 pounds in six weeks. Mm. And I was like... Are you diabetic? I don't know yet. So... I, I would say... Because I know like... Uh, I'll like find out. Diabetes, soon. they have. I was like, I was like, are you di- like pre-diabetic or anything like that? I don't that? know. We'll find out. Yeah, I got an I got an appointment coming up. One so. thing you got to do is like take care of yourself. I, yeah. I mean, they, well, being they, on the road so many yeah. so much, it's what sucks because yeah. the food sucks in the road. Yeah. So that's what it's getting to me now. It's yeah. finally catching up. There's there's a lot of things out there as far as like meal preps and you could do like they could ship to you. Oh yeah, I try to those. you know I've, I've used that a, a lot too. Because, you know, scheduling and life gets ahead of you and, yep. you know, you're doing so many things. It's like you have to cook or somebody, if, you know, you have your partner that cooks for you and, you know, they're doing other things. And then yeah. you have to, like, eat out, you know. So it's difficult. Dieting is difficult. Exercising is easy. Dieting is difficult. Yeah. Yeah, I cut off all the carbs. That's what I did. Yeah. Like, well, it's sugars, that's like carbs yeah. and sugars is the yeah, main thing. Yeah, carbs and sugars. So I, no more sodas for sure. Yeah. Everything's water. Water. Water, water, water. Because I always, right here, like I always carry, I drink water like a fish. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, there's, I always have a day that I do my cheat. Yeah, yeah, you do a little. Yeah, but I've that. been staying away from the sodas. Yeah. So it's been working though. Yeah. I feel better. I sleep better. Yeah. Um, I'm functioning better. Yeah. Um, you know, my yeah, legs take care of your health, man. They haven't gotten swollen in about three weeks now, finally. Mm-hmm. It started off with once a year mm-hmm. with one side. And then now it happened every like six months. And yeah. now it happened every every two or three weeks. Shit. So then I was like, okay, something's, I got to get checked. Yeah. So got insurance, make sure I, you know, I go get checked and did some blood work. And since I've been doing dieting. Yeah, that's something I didn't realize too. Because like, you know, you work, you're your own business yeah so you don't have like insurance and yeah. stuff like that so you have to look that stuff for yourself and stuff yeah exactly so i hear you yeah so I, it, you know I, good thing i have my sister helps me my new, my new girlfriend now she's been helping me diet she's mm. been the one that's been pushing me yeah. really hard yeah, yeah, yeah. to do that um it's just so hard though you know because you're so used to eating so bad mm. at least for me you know yeah but it, i'm learning though no I'm i know learning. we would we would go out and we would have Wendy's fucking every night. Yeah. Every night. Go Late traveling. Night. Forget about it. Like, oh, you're going to yeah. stop at a McDonald's. You're going to stop at wherever. Yeah, whatever fast food we can get. Keep yeah, on going. Because, you know. Even even the restaurants. Like, yeah. even if you sit down and eat, they're not that great in foods either, yeah. you know. So, whatever. Yeah. It's just, it's, to me, the way I see it when it comes to food, now you know, when you're, and you're going out mm. and you're with people, to me, the food is just a plus, but uh, I personally like the time you spend with the person yeah so it doesn't matter who it is it's it's a good conversation you know good time with the person and food is just the extra thing for me yeah. so it's uh you know so i always try to look for days where i can take off and just have a good time with somebody you yeah know? just sit down and talk kind of like what we're doing right now yeah, yeah. you know that's been- that's the one thing one of the big reasons that i i also did this like you were saying it's it's always nice to like get away yeah from just the reality of so many things are going on in your life, mm-hmm. whether it's family, whether it's your relationship, whether it's work, whether you're driving on the highway and somebody cuts you off. It's always nice to just get away from all of that, have your own space and kind of just either not talk about it or talk about it. Right. And, you know, just vent it out because I feel a big thing as far as like 
male culture, no one really expresses, you know, how they're feeling or do yeah. what they're going through in their mind. You know, they go home and they just sit there and they're just like, they, they just, we, we retain a lot of that shit that goes on, but we kind of maybe don't express it. Right. You know? Yeah. I mean, for me, and then like our bodies and our, and like our physical self and our mental self is just like deteriorating. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. And well, I mean, it's, I'm a, I'm, I'm proof of that yeah. because the, for the past, what, three years now, mm-hmm. you know, after my divorce, I've been living with a friend and it's literally work, go to, to the house and go to sleep. Yeah. And it's like, no come you know there's a lot of times where you don't have conversations with anybody yeah you know? just maybe i mean you phone. have conversations like on, with yeah yeah on the phone but it's not the same you know yeah it's you know but it you know now that i have a new girlfriend it's been it's been helpful for any every kind of way you know yeah. the dieting talking it's like always that. good to have like you know a partner that's that really gives a shit about you yeah that's you know for what i'm sure. saying like they're worried about your health they're worried about how you're feeling you know even if it was a friend a good friend, yeah even you know? yeah exactly you know, you know? It, they just check up on you like hey what's going on like how you been yeah you know no you don't see that any very often anymore you know and like i i hit you up you were like one of the first people like to hit up for me to do this because like dude i miss you man like yeah we had so many great memories <laughs> yes, and shit sure. like that and it's just like you're doing so well i just want to be like thank hey, you hey man just like I appreciate it too like I just want to say, like, I'm proud of you. I'm, like, so happy for you, you that, you know, you're doing all this. And just take care of yourself, too, along the way. Because you told me that your mother, you know, she had she went through cancer twice. And, you know, I don't know if, like, your your bloodline or your, your, is yeah, like, susceptible know. to that. I can tell you that um, we do have Alzheimer's in our family, too. So yeah. that's another thing we have to worry about yeah. now. <laughs> that's With all it. those numbers cramming, dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> But, you know, it's just, you got to keep on going, though. Yeah, you got to keep on, keep on. That's what I have on my toolbox. So I built this toolbox, like a little coffee table. I cut it in half. And, like, on the corner of it, instead of saying snap on, it says keep on. Oh, cool. Yeah. So just, like, just fucking keep on. (laughs) It's true. It's true. There's nothing, you know, you just got to keep on going until until your your time is due here. Yeah. You just got to keep on going. Yeah. And if that time ever does come, like everything that you've done in your life, just be happy with it and shit like oh, that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I, I mean, don't live with regrets and like do also the things that you love to do. One thing I was telling my girlfriend today was that I love the fact that I was able to um, do what I do, do what I love. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, go places that i never thought i would go yeah going to guatemala travel man it, fucking dude travel. listen guatemala people say that it's it's all poor country they rob you and all these things guatemala is a beautiful place you i see things i see places like those completely different yeah. than what people always say yes. or tell you you know mm-hmm. uh yeah okay you know you'll see a lot of poor stuff but i look beyond that and it's just the, the people the, the people the the land the is land, just yeah. so beautiful like like people uh the volcanoes is amazing to see like mm. i would love to have a volcano in my backyard <laughs> just, until it erupts <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> until but, it fucking erupts but, <laughs> but you know well, i'm just like well, well shit. at least at least far enough to see the whole thing you know like yeah, the, yeah. Whole, the whole volcano is just beautiful to, to see you know so, yeah so it's, it's a it's, it's powerful for me it's it i don't know it was just really weird to Look at them and actually like them. I was like, why the fuck do I even like a yeah. volcano? I just, I, I, it's, it's, I know exactly what you mean because it goes back to like your primal self. Like we came from, you know, the land. Yeah. You know, now everything is buildings and, you know, internet. Yeah. And, you know, cars. And yeah. to just step back and just see the landscape of, you know, how things used to be. Or how they were, you just like you marvel at its magnificence. I mean, I love the history when it comes to the like the land. Yeah, and the people show you and talk to you about the history. Mm. It's it's really cool, you know. Andor- Honduras also was a nice place. I loved it. You know, yeah. It's beautiful place. It's just nice to see. I mean, I went to Sweden mm. to tune cars. 
That was awesome. Have you been to Ireland? I've been to Ireland because my, well, I was like 15 years old. Uh-huh. But because my aunt lives over there. Wow. She, mar- she married an Irish person. And so we Is were she still to, over there? Yeah, she's still there. What part? Uh, don't remember exactly. Cork? Maybe uh, Cork. Don't I don't remember. It's been a long time since, okay. I, since I even cared to find Kilkenny. out. Kilkenny? Okay. <laughs> the, but I, I know that we landed in Dublin. So yeah. that's as much as I know. But um, it's just... It's, it's so awesome to travel, mm-hmm. you know, California, Colorado, the Virgin Islands, beautiful, beautiful. St. Croix, it is my favorite mm-hmm. place in the world right now. And I go there. I've been going there for what, about seven years now? Seven I'm years? dying to go to Jamaica. I went to Jamaica. Very beautiful, too. I love to it. It's a different, but I've only gone tourism. Like, yeah. I haven't gone. I've, oh, bullshit. I went to work once. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you remember a dino, you see, a dino shop in Opalaka called Twilight? Yeah, Twilight. Yeah, of course. So I went with Twilight to tune a car over there, a few cars, a couple of years back. Mm. Took me and took me around. and It's beautiful. I love it. Anything that has to do with islands, I love it. Mm. But St. Croix has, has been my escape place. Like every time I go, I tell my boy, I said, he was calling me too. <laughs> um, I tell him, just give me one day out of the whole week. Or oh, however days, how many days I got in it to be there. Just give me one day to just take in the place. Mm. You know, I can sit down outside, and feel the breeze, and just look around. And it's the best. It's that it's the best. It's know? the best. Um, a lot of people, you know, call me and I tell them, "No, I'm in. I'm out of town. I'm, you know, I'm in Saint, in the Virgin Islands." Oh. Uh, you're living that life. Oh, you know, like it's. They always think that I, I'm. I'm vacationing yeah it's like a luxury yeah, yeah. I'm, I, and i'm not i'm working yeah but i just get to be lucky to be, be in those in places be- beautiful places you yeah. know it's different you know and <clears throat> yeah for me saying i'm from puerto rico and i love puerto rico i really do but saint croix is my go-to place that's your place yeah man I, there's I, always I, a place for somebody i i i feel like just last year we went to spain and we stayed in Barcelona and then we stayed in Ibiza and Ibiza was like so beautiful in many ways the place for me is Ireland I think Ireland is my 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 spot but Ibiza is nice because it it's it's a Latin culture yeah so I felt very comfortable with being with those type of people as far I'm not saying I'm like I'm not comfortable with the like the Irish people. They're very welcoming. Yeah, but it felt like I was home. It's a little different, like like of my my background, my DNA, my bloodline, and the the scenery there is incredible. We went to this place called uh, Esvedra, mm-hmm. and it's like a rock formation. It's just coming out of the ocean, and then all you see behind it is just endless amounts of water. It's just like you yeah. see the you see the earth you see the curvature of the earth and it's i you know there's a big thing i escaped there's a big just thing looking on at the, that on, on social well not social i guess social media like tiktok and all this instagram big thing about flat earth and and you know oh yeah yeah, yeah. i, I was like <sighs> we're never gonna find out a hundred percent what it really is mm. in our lifetime mm. i don't think that there there there's there's good both we got like, a flat earth conversation going here. All right, it's getting <laughs> juicy now. <laughs> so it's like, I don't believe in either one because I don't know, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, ah, whatever, you know, for me. There's always that. But there's it's good that, information yeah, on both yeah. ends. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, damn, this is interesting, mm-hmm. you know? But um, I always believed it was round, so. I'm I still a, think it's round. There's a lot of evidence and, yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. But there's always, yeah, I'm so sure there's I, points the, to like the whole flat earth thing. But, so not talking about it, the other day, uh, my friend mentions to me that when Japan wanted to strike Hawaii, mm-hmm. right? Uh-huh. But, um, Pearl well, Harbor, during Pearl Harbor, yeah. They flew the other way, the longer way, mm-hmm. because the earth was flat. So that's what they're saying, right? We, we, some weird but he, he went like this. They went, out, they went around. Well, yeah. yeah. Why would you flew, go around if it well, wasn't? Well, I mean, they went the opposite, the long way. Uh-huh. You know, Japan's here, and then uh, Hawaii's here, and then 
California, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't go this way. They went all the way around because there's an end, supposedly. Mm -hmm. You know? So then I was I was like, that doesn't make any sense. He is was he, telling is me. he a flat earther? No, he just wanted he to just want <laughs> he just wanted to fuck with me. He wanted to fuck with me. I'm like, doesn't make any sense why they would do that. Uh, it's like, oh, they went around the long way. What does that tell you? I'm like, I don't know, and I don't give a fuck. Yeah. But then some guy um, well, they were like kamikaze, so they didn't want to maybe seem like if there was, yeah, you know, too, I guess, poignant, like, yeah, whatever. But then there was something else that came up, and it was a guy uh, that's a pilot, and he almost documents everything he's doing because he what he does is he delivers airplanes, mm. like big, big, you know, big commercials or whatever kind of airplanes. He just deliver them from place to place because I guess the airplanes get service in some places and yeah. then he take he's the he's the fucking Uber for airplanes. <laughs> oh, shit. You know, like uh -huh. he's the one that gets on a plane and he goes with a team and he travels and he takes up gets drops off that plane, then he gets on another plane to go back and back and forth, right? And he explained the curve that the earth is curved looking at the map and the way that their thing is mm. it's curved earth yeah so and he explained that if he were to take he shows it in the in and explains it on the on the on the miles mm. if it goes straight it's this long but if they fly over the top side and come around to the other side it's shorter, it's shorter. yeah so it's just it was i had to Slap him in the face with that one because it, show, it, show, it showed finally what you know that is it has it is just curvature, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, anyways, it was just it was funny, but I don't, you know, I don't, I try not to get into no flat earth, okay? <laughs> no flat earth, dude. I met a flat earther one time and that was a hell of a conversation. I'm just like, well, it wasn't, it wasn't really much of a conversation, it was just kind of like, just like, okay, and walking away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to. Yeah, you have to. You I mean, for me, to. like, I'm having this conversation, I'm like, I'm trying to end it. Already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, why did I start this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, as far as that, it's just, yeah, just travel. Traveling is beautiful. Meeting people. Yeah. Talking to people. And one of the things I've, I've come to, to realize, there was, there's, there's also so many opportunities that present themselves, and uh, people are kind of blind to it. Because, you know, let's say uh, an unhoused, somebody that's homeless doesn't have any money. They come up to you and you're just like, oh, they just want money. Right. I had, you know, a homeless guy come up to me and I was just like, hey, how are you? He's like, no. He's like, hey, you want to hear a joke? And I was just like, sure. <laughs> he told me the joke and I fucking laughed. It was like a stupid little joke, but I enjoyed that inter interaction. interaction. You know what I mean? And I gave him a beer. I was like, I don't have any money, but I have this beer. You want a beer? He's like, oh, sure. You know, he didn't ask me for anything. But, you know, a lot of people would be like, they'll walk away. Walk away. Or they'll be like, no, sorry, whatever. Yeah. Or you disgusted. Know, be disgusted. Yeah. But a lot, th those things are precious. Yeah. You know? Of course. You, you, and it's funny. Somebody told you a joke and you'd laugh. It's funny because maybe, maybe you've always been this way, right? I don't know. But you learn this now as you're older. Yeah. That and that you have that in you to understand those things yeah. and, and and want those yeah. things. I think if if you have that awareness of protecting things that are like insignificant or weaker than you, like even like bugs or whatever. Like I know a lot of people you know don't like bugs, but you know if you see something that needs help, no matter how small it is you're going to try to take care of it. Like you, you're going to understand like, damn, what if I was hungry? You know? Yeah. Is anybody going to give me some, you know, some sandwich meat? Yeah. You know? So it's like, it's that karma thing too. I yeah. feel, you know, and I think it's paid dividends for you because like, again, you've done so much, man. And I, and I, and I've seen like where you came from essentially. Like, yeah you know, to where, to where you're at now and where you're going. So it's, it's awesome, you know, that you're able to come by again and we could catch up and, you know, reminisce and that's fucking awesome, dude. I'm so glad that you came yeah, by. Yeah, thank man. you for having me. Seriously. No, for sure. It's a good conversation. I, I needed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Definitely. very therapeutic. It's just like, yeah. I mean, fucking, you know, I need this shit so too. So I did a, yeah. I did a podcast, as you know, with um, Street Alpha. Yeah. And 
that was an awesome you know to talk about yeah. it was mostly all you know about frustration yeah, 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 yeah. you know it's like we, we kind of got away with that conversation as well but with about him but it's just you know he's he's part of my life anyways as one way or the other yeah yeah yeah, you're kind of like a you're a unit. You're kind of like you know you're yeah. a team and stuff. You know, and believe it or not, you know, like I don't hang out with him as much as I people think. Yeah, because we just have two different lives. Yeah, yeah. You have you your know? life. He has his life. Yeah. But that's the thing. A lot of people always get caught up on oh we don't talk, we don't hang out. Um, I have friends that I haven't hung out with them, and you know I don't hang out with them as consistently as I would like to. Right, right. But we're we're always there. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like you hit me up with like hey bro, what's going? It's like nothing's changed yeah like it sucks we probably don't hang out as much as we, we would like to but that doesn't change anything right you know don't think i don't hang out with you or talk to you as much because you think i have like something against you it's just we have two different lives right you know yeah whenever we could get together and make some time like we're, we're always going to be there i mean it's just know? like the we also got to make with. the effort too right yeah, <laughs> yeah of course of course yeah i mean like the friend that i live with now i mean he's one of my best friends and I don't see him. Yeah. I, if I see him, I saw him last night, mm. and it's like we carried a conversation, you know, whatever, and we went to bed. Yeah. But on a daily basis, I don't see him. Yeah. We we conversate on the phone like we're still friends and we don't live together, mm. but we don't see each other. Yeah. But you know, it's it's then you got the times where you know you hang out and have that time with your friends. Yeah, dude, I haven't hung out with you in years, years. and here we are, two hours in, you know. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Just like that. That was quick. Yeah. Time flies. You know. Damn. Time does fly, dude. Like I could just I remember just yesterday, you know, we're just traveling to freaking like English town. Yeah. For like haunted day or whatever. Man. And you're just there knock the fuck out. Everywhere I go. <laughs> you're just a sleepy boy. <laughs> I'm still like that though. Uh, I'm still like that. Like, wrong, dude, I sleep like a son of a bitch now. Like I gotta get my sleep. Yeah. Sleep man. is very important. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I've noticed that not sleeping. I've, I get sick. Yeah. So I'll get a cold and things like that. And so now I try to sleep as yeah. much as I can, you know, or the good thing. So I guess you can say the good thing that came out of selling my dyno um, was that I finally get to sleep at night. Mm. I don't get to do late nights anymore. Yeah. So because it kind of was always that way. Yeah. You know, no, you even, were... with that, even with ponds, like. I had keys to it. There was mm. nobody there. Five in the morning, four five, in the morning. Four or five o'clock in the yeah. morning. Sometimes six, the mechanics would show up. He's like, you still here? But obviously it was a lot busier then. You know? Yeah, yeah. So. Um, and you're still trying to get like out there at that time. Because I think like when you went to Ponds, um, you were getting you were, you were getting your customer base. And you were just, you know, trying to do as much as you can with the time that you had available. Yeah. You know. But yeah, brother. Yeah, drink as much water as you possibly can. Water is essential. I'm been trying. It's life giving. <laughs> I've been trying to actually. So my, uh, I have a, a friend that has the machine. What is that called? The high. I can't remember. Like the osmosis thing. It's a reverse it turns osmosis. Into the water into something else. Uh, oh my god! I forgot the name of it. I was just re doing research on it. You put the, you can literally grab tap water and it'll filtrate that water. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's like a way better water. I, don't know I think it's like reverse osmosis. I think that's what they call it. <sighs> I don't remember. It's, it's got a specific name to it. Yeah. Oh my God. Like it, it, re like it removes something. all the pure, like the impurities yes, of the water that. and stuff. Yeah. He's like, just come to my house, bring all the water you want. And it's, it's just yours. Around, yeah. Just get it done. I'll give you the keys to my house. What the fuck? <clears throat> he just he says you need that water. Uh -huh. He says ever since I started drinking it's that like water, alkaline or yeah, something. I don't even know. I don't even. I have no idea what the <laughs> hell that name is. It's really good fucking water. Yeah, <laughs> it's the best but water. That's the thing though. So that you know, like like Zephyr Hills used to be my favorite water, and about five years ago, I want to say, I picked up the same size bottle, and I look at the bottle. I'm like, why the fuck is it yellow? Why is it murky? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. what the fuck? I don't is drink this? Zephyr Hills water as much as I would so, like to. Ever since then, I've tried to stay away from that water. Mm -hmm. 
because it's taste different. Yeah. Everything changed on well, it. Well, Dasani. Dude, I can't Ugh. drink fucking Dasani water. Oh. That shit is horrible. If I horrible. drink Dasani, I have to chug it. Yeah. I cannot just take a little bit and take it. No. Like, I got to be dehydrated as fuck. That's the only option. That's the only way I'm going to have Dasani. That's the same way. Yeah. And it sucks because what at the, the airport. What the fuck is Dasani water at the anyway? Airports is what that, that's what they fucking sell. Yeah. And I hate it. I mean, there's other options, Dude, but. Right here. Get yourself a little cantiner. <laughs> and just. Like I just put water in this. Like I have like a filter and everything. Put it there, and I just I have water yeah. with me always. This shit don't leave me. Like I have it. This goes yeah, everywhere I go. I go. <laughs> I'm not. I'm serious about my water. Like, yeah. dude, I remember. So we did. Um, you ever heard? You know, Burning Man, right? Yeah. So we did Burning Man a couple of years back, and you're in the desert. Oh shit! You're in the fucking desert, and it got one point where I wasn't drinking. I I didn't drink i drank water yeah but i didn't drink as much as i should drink water right and then it hit me that i was dehydrated wow yeah i passed out oh shit yeah i passed out i I, well i i like i didn't pass out but like i was on the verge of passing out like i stumbled and everything but i was like still coherent and then I drank cold water and that changed my life. Huh. That literally changed my life. I was like, holy shit, this is everything. Holy so, shit. yeah, yeah. It was like one of those experiences. Yeah, just you, like you're out in the desert, like Burning Man. Burning Man is a great experience. We had so much fun, like many memories. We're going actually back this year. But you learn so many things and drinking water very often is important is this is very important I for your you, health for everything for everything. i mean now that i've been doing water mostly f- because of i got away from the sodas yeah uh, or juices yeah it ha- you can tell the difference in your body yeah, yeah. period how you feel and everything yeah. the inflammation yeah you know because all that sugar shit oh, people just... were telling me it was oh it's water retention i was like i don't know so. no, 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 something no, no. else i'll find out for sure yeah, yeah i'll yeah. let you know what it is yeah February second. Just don't get your information from a flat earther. Just. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was great. Uh, all right, man. Yeah. Well, I feel we could talk for another two and a half hours because man, it's been so long. But we could de- we're definitely gonna do this again. I feel. Yeah, I think so. We, yeah, maybe man. we can bring frustrated. in. I'm down. I'm, I'm fucking you know, super down. Yeah, you just you know it's gonna be a little hard to get him in. Yeah, but you know. I mean, if whatever he feels comfortable. Yeah, you know, I'll talk to him. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he'll do it. Yeah, me and him, we go way back. You yeah, know. yeah, yeah. It's just the problem is getting him to stop what he's doing. Yeah, you know, I know he's a busy man. Yeah, that's what that's what with you. Like, I know you're busy as well. And there was like, there was like, I felt like I was being maybe a little too like, no, hey, no, no, you know, care. I don't care because you, know. you have to kind of be pushy with me anyways. Yeah. So to be able to get me, so like my friend that I live with now, his wife, mm. she knows how I am, yeah. and I've I've missed so many events or get togethers because i'm always working yeah so she's always on top of my schedule Mm -hmm. especially when there's something going on yeah don't forget don't forget don't forget it's Mm. always every day is a reminder even though i have a reminder in my calendar i still fuck some way somehow i fuck it up yeah so she's always on top of me because you know she you know she likes not that she she likes to spend time with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Her and, you know, her husband, which is my yeah. best friends, you yeah. know, they, they just, they want me there. Yeah. So, and it's, I think it's important to be around people. That, be around people. Yeah. yeah. Especially the ones you love. Especially the ones you love. Yeah. Because you never know what could happen, man. That's, I've surrounded myself with people that are truly genuine over like over the years. Because, you know, you always have people that just want something out of you. You know what I mean? And it's hard to find those people that are there for you and that actually care for you and actually want the best of you. When you have people that honestly want to bring the best out of you, there's no feeling like that. Right. You know, like if you have your girlfriend or your best friend. It's funny just, you say that because my girlfriend told me that today too. Did she? Yeah. Wow. Because it's it's always been some people that need me. Yeah. You know, be, not that they want me there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's always a need. They, yeah. They need, me, need me for something. Yeah. And like I... like. Bro, you're you're a genuine, nice, beautiful human being. So people take advantage of that shit too. Yeah, yeah you know, oh, there's yeah. there's a lot of people that just be like, oh, you know, he he'll 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 say yes, 
you know, or he'll yeah. do this or he'll do that. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm very much that self. My, I'm very much like that myself. To this, to this day, there's cars that I don't charge still yeah. because yeah. they're not ready. It's like, mm -hmm. all right, bro, next time. Yeah. You know, but some days if I get on the dyno, I'll, I'll get pissed off and I don't show it, but um, pay me now. And yeah, yeah. next time when you get it right, let me know. We'll deal with it. You know? Yeah. But it's gotten to that point already where frustration has gotten to me. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah, but yeah. It's, it's been helping with the pockets. <laughs> <laughs> There's like I said, it's like a balance. Like, yeah. you know, yeah, you, you have one side where we have to live. Yeah. You know, things cost money. You want also things that you want to do cost money. If you want to travel more, if you want to build a fucking thousand horsepower or whatever, you know, it, that shit takes money. But also don't forget yourself. Yeah. You know, and the people around you. So I think that's the biggest fucking blessing and curse. <laughs> yeah. <You know. laughs> that's for sure. But yeah, brother. I really like your setup. Thanks, man. I really, really like it. Thank you. It's I'm cozy. trying to I'm trying to yeah, I'm trying to make it like uh I wanna put more decor up, but I just I want it to be that's why I did like the whole space thing. Yeah. Like you look out the window, but it's just like Yeah, yeah. Like no, just it's an escape just a nice little escape yeah no it's perfect i love it thank you man i love it yeah. i love the helmet thank you that was that was some work <laughs> that's the soul that's what it, i call it i did like a couple like reels it's like a whole character thing i'm doing oh, okay yeah cool so I'm trying to have a little bit of fun you know hopefully yeah, you know it pays off too but that's like i'm not that's not like my my end goal you know what i'm saying like i said like talking with people like this for me is everything yeah you know yeah it's a good time yeah good time. i literally had somebody here one of the guys that was here last night i met him for the first time two weeks prior oh, shit. for the first time i was at a uh, lincoln's brewery right there oh yeah the, and um one of my friends also the dj that was here yeah he was spinning and i was waiting in line trying to get a beer and this guy had some like fucking badass pants i was like yo those pants are sick and he's like oh yeah i'm a fashion designer oh shit and then i'm like oh shit like do you have like you know he's like oh yeah we started talking bro he's into cars oh shit. he has like a fucking twin turbo v6 uh 370z oh damn and i was like what the hell and like we like the same music and everything and i literally met buddy two weeks ago and he so happens to be a fashion designer damn you know, I had a, another a guy here that he's a music producer and I just met him at a music festival. So uh, there's like, again, it's like those that like I was telling you, there's so many things that present themselves in front of you. Like you're blind to see it or you don't, you know, interact with whatever. And maybe if it's like a little different or doesn't look, you know, like your cup of tea or whatever, like, but there's so many things out there for you to engage with. Just don't be scared. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Literally, I literally met the guy fucking two weeks ago and we, we had it. We would talk for like fucking two and a half hours. Shit. You know, just talk about like music and fashion Everything. and traveling and people and like that, that, that's, that's what I want. Like, that's what makes me feel good. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. It's, a, it's the only way. To keep on going anyways, you know? Mm -hmm. Be able to interact with different people. And it's got to keep on, man. Yeah. Keep on, brother. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. But yeah, brother. Well, I guess I'll let you go. Yeah. I'll sign this out. Yeah. 10, yeah. yeah, I have to fucking go to work. I have to clock in tomorrow. I got to go to my <laughs> regular nine to five. <laughs> but yeah, I don't even know what I'm doing tomorrow. Nice. That's, pro that's probably the best thing. I wish I w didn't know what I was doing tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I'll probably just sleep in. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just take care of yourself, relax. Yeah, you know, drink some water. Yeah, definitely. You know, hang out with water. your lady, and then. Yeah, I'm actually gonna call her and see where she's at now. <laughs> <laughs> if right. not, then tomorrow it is. Well, I mean, if anybody needs to, fucking get their car tuned, just hit up Javi. Thank Javi you. Tune, man. Yeah. Whether it's gonna be a B fifty eight in the future yeah. or a fucking it's, coyote or it's gonna be it's gonna be either one or maybe even both. Because yeah. I need to I need to venture off. Yeah. But if it's Honda, for sure hit him up. Listen, the other day I did a um 
uh, maybe you can edit this and put this in the... No, no, no. This, okay. A lot of the times, my first episode was a disaster. <laughs> and I'm still... Bro, like the audio cut off. Oh, yeah. Like an hour and a half in. And then it came back in. I was like, I'm, I'm not going to edit nothing. Like, I edit some parts... But I try to keep, I'm not trying to go for perfection. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you get what you get. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, so. So talking, we're keeping it going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up doing, in the Virgin Islands, actually, I ended up doing a RX-7 with a LS swap, uh, 5.3 V8. And it had a Mega Squirt standard. God. I hate that. Every machine. time I hear Mega Squirt, I, dude, I remember I had a McCurr. Uh huh. Yes. XR4 Ti. Yeah. Dude, the only thing that was like a tuning software was Mega Squirt Ugh. for that thing. So I just heard that name. I just I, I hate Mega Squirt. First of all, it's a stupid name. Mega it Squirt. Is. I fucking hate it. it like, is. I Mega Squirt all the time. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, shit. Don't call your tuning software Mega Squirt. Mega but Squirt yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, so I actually hated the software, mm. and I still do. I don't like it. Mm. I don't like the software. I don't like the. CCU. It's too much involved for like little. It's a, a lot of work for little return. Yes. I feel. Yeah. So like, but I was able to appreciate this particular car with that ECU. Okay. I thought I was gonna have a, a bad day, mm. you know, or a bad weekend with the car. Luckily, it was put together well, and the ECU worked well, and I actually finally got to see more that I originally have seen, because mm. I stay away from it. So this time, I had no way to get around it, so I had to tackle it on. Mm. And honestly, um, it came with a good, beat, decent base map, so it was easier. For, my job was easier, period, mm. you know? But I enjoyed doing something different than nice. other. Okay. It's funny to say. I don't know why. Yeah. But, you know? I mean, I love what I do with It's Frustrate. always fun to learn. Like, I'm, I'm, starting to, I'm starting to DJ and mix. Oh, you know? cool. Okay. And that's a learning curve for me. I've never done it. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that, you yeah. know? So, and then I, I enjoyed seeing something else that I'm never, I'm not used to yeah. going down the track. Yeah. It was awesome to see... That. Like you did that. Yeah, it was it was really great. It was honestly it was a great experience. It's funny how like those little things that you don't expect to be good. It's yeah. like one of like the the best one of your best experiences. Yeah, no, you and, never expected. And it worked it. out. The guy was so happy. Yeah, the cars never ran that good. All his friends yeah. have seen the cars as he bought it, and from whatever he's done on the, on on the track to whatever I did to it. On the dyno to the track, mm. everybody was in love with the car. Yeah, everybody was betting, you know, because that's what they do. Over <laughs> that's there. what it's all about, though. Yeah, too, man. And it's a, it's great feeling to see everybody around it to be happy. Yeah, and they were like, like, finally, yeah, yeah, finally, yeah. finally, this car yeah. is you know is get, getting somewhere. You know, yeah, that so, that feedback is always the best. Yes, you yeah, know you that know. energy is like unmatched. Yeah, I mean, and 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 then I you know, and I like to I like to make sure that the person is happy yeah. with the car you know yeah. because if you're not happy with the car for me it's a disaster yeah you know i, I want to make sure that you're happy with the car mm -hmm. because it it's just it's important to me yeah it, it is you know yeah you take pride in the work that you do right i mean you know? not only that it's that you put the car together yeah why wouldn't you be happy exactly you know so, yeah you just gotta yeah just fucking do it too yeah you know there's a lot has happened over the years too where whether it's career or even new ventures like this you know yeah. i put a lot of time on investment like i pulled money out of my retirement to do this oh shit you know like the equipment but like putting this whole together but it's making you happy i'm too. exactly like that to me and i had people tell me like why are you pulling money out of your retirement and i'm just like i want to do this like yeah. i have a vision like i have an idea like i want to do this even if it doesn't work out and even if it doesn't want, work out yeah you're still doing something you wanted to do exactly and it makes you happy mm -hmm. period that's it and it's doing its job already yeah. i have literally haven't posted anything i haven't posted no videos nothing and this is like i feel where i belong like i'm, I'm probably gonna call out of work tomorrow just so i could like you know organize yeah. some things but I loved being here. I love doing this. I love, dude. I had all my friends here last night. You know, even people I just met. Cool. Here, 
Yeah. You know? And we were just... Vibing. Just vibing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's definitely... This is if this is what makes you happy. Yeah. Keep on doing it, man. Yeah. Don't and if, even if you don't, dude, I have, dude, I have friends that did podcasts and they're like on their like two over their two hundredth episode. You know, they've been doing it for years, but you know they don't have a million followers or right. listens or stuff. But they are still doing it because they just love doing it. Exactly. You know, and that that's the thing is also like don't get caught up with you know being successful and sure that's fucking cool yeah you know it pays the bills yeah but if you get too <coughs> wound up in that then you just you're losing a part of yourself too you're just right you know just doing it just to for others do something for yourself be happy drink water <laughs> drink water <for> sure. <laughs> well the last thing i'll tell you is um I think that one thing that Jimbo told me. You remember Jimbo? No, fucking of course I remember Jimbo, man. <laughs> um, fucking missed that, that guy. I agree. Yeah. That I agree with him a hundred percent. Is I finally closed the chapter of K Phonics, mm. and I got rid of everything that had to do with K Phonics. Really. So to me, that was kind of satisfying to hear, mm -hmm. because I was still stuck with you know. It was such a great time and moment. And, yeah. And it was, good, it was a good shop. Yeah. It was going to be an amazing shop. Yeah. And um, now it's like I to start all over. Yeah. You know? And it's a, for me, that starting all over without having anything to do with K-Phonics, I think it's going to be great. Not that I regret anything that happened because no, everything exactly good came out of K-Phonics. Yeah, yeah. You know? I know exactly what you and mean. Even though there was bad times, it was still, everything was yeah. great. You know? Like it was... Like now you're doing things a hundred percent like yeah. for yourself. Yes. You know, there was a, there was, I, there was a time like that where I was, I felt that way where I still felt kind of like that whole mentality of like the K phonics. Right. I felt like I did something horrible. Like when I left and people were asking me like what K phonics is, K phonics that, and you know, it was a big learning curve. I learned a lot about myself, mm -hmm. about others, about, you know, the industry and stuff. And a lot of people, I don't, I don't think they understand like what K phonics was about. They only saw, again, they don't see the work that you've been putting in. Right. They only see the front. Yep. You know, they see the guy there that has the money that mm -hmm. has, you know the cars and you know you're you're traveling you're going to places you're having a good time yeah but you're you're working you're beating trying to survive up. you're beating yourself up you know and then also it feels good to step away from that and close that chapter mm -hmm. and do something fully yourself and be like okay i'm gonna take this leap forward and not worry about my past where i came from how everything kind of like manifested itself from this time so it's always good to start fresh yeah it's always good to start fresh so that's the way i'm looking at it now yeah i'm starting fresh it's a little late but it's it's not too late it's <laughs> never too late the moment you think it's too late it's already you're, it's late bro the most coolest things i've ever seen so um, when we went to Spain, we went to this bar called uh, Jazz Man. And there was a jazz band that was there, and there was a pianist. You know how old the pianist is? What was that what I was playing? Oh. 96 years old. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. He was 96 years old. And he probably was a badass. And he was, I have videos. I'll show you the videos after. He was playing beautifully. And then his wife was sitting next to us in the bar. And then we started talking to his wife and, and like, oh, um, they were like talking about him. I was like, oh, you know him? He's like, oh, that's my husband. We've been together for 50 years. And like, he's a fucking amazing, 96 years old, wow. still playing the piano. So you're never too old. It's never too late. Like, just because you think now it's like, oh, now I'm starting. Now well, I'm doing, I'm doing this whole thing. I'm 35, I'm doing this whole thing now. Do I feel like it's too late? Maybe. Yeah. 
But it's, it's, it's you're it's, doing what you want. And you're doing what you want to do. And it, that goes for you too. Like you're saying like, I'm doing what I want to do. Maybe it's too late. No, it's not. You've accomplished, you've done so much. Yeah. You've done so much. Like, again, you like time goes by so fl- so fast that you don't realize the things that you've done. And you've done a lot for the community. Everybody knows Hobby Tune. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know. That's why I tell you that it, when I went to um, El House to have a drink and just yeah. eat, I put on my hat because I... Your people go, <laughs> yeah. Because, because it's kind of like being a celebrity. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't like the attention. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're very humble. Like Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of have to sort of... Oh, oh nice. Oh, <laughs> I kind of have to hide yeah. a little bit because I just want that peaceful time for myself, you yeah. know? So I've kind of done this a few times already and I kind of like it just being there by myself. It's kind of... Mm. Maybe some people will say it's sad, but... No. You know, I kind of like just me time. There's nothing wrong with it, me time. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with me time. Not at all. So... But yeah, I have to do that sometimes because yeah. you know, de- depending on because everybody knows Howie. Yeah. Well, Howie tune. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> my 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 girlfriend calls me uh, Cisco because my first name is Francisco. Mm-hmm. So she calls me Cisco, and she says there's two different people. Yeah. There's Howie tune, mm-hmm. and then there's Cisco. Yeah. F- for Francisco. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, so I kind of Batista, right? Yeah, Francisco. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like, it, I took that in, you know, because it's like. You know, she's right. You know, mm-hmm. there is two different people. Yeah. Because uh, once I'm, you know, putting that phone down, it's very hard for me to do. Yeah. So it was actually very good that I had no signal. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You That's know? the thing about this place, too. It's a little, like, closed off. Like, I'm. it's like a nice little disconnect. Yeah. So, you know, it's good to disconnect from that phone and be able to have this conversation because the phone takes a lot of my time. And yeah. that's what happens with, you know, with when it comes to hanging out with friends and stuff. So yeah. the the phone has to come down yeah. and then it's the problem of work. You yeah. know, it, for me, work doesn't stop. Yeah. And sometimes I'm just so behind in answering people that I have to continue to answer yeah. or work. You know, yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So like putting the phone down, you know, probably will, I'll probably be mad when I'm getting in the truck, but <laughs> there's going to be like tons of messages in there. But yeah, just always, always remember to like check in with yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, just remember that you're a fucking human. Like you're not a fucking machine. You're not a robot. Like, yeah. You know, you you got to pay the bills, sure, but to what extent? You know, if you're not fucking happy, or you're you're just like frustrated, or you're not like I feel like that all the time when I I go to you know I go to work too. I clock in and I'm just like I don't want to deal with this right now. You know, but you have to do things to kind of get away from that to escape it almost yeah you know and there's nothing wrong with checking in with yourself you know doing like little activities like even if it's you know riding your bike or doing yoga for fucking 30 minutes or going to the bar and just having a drink just by yourself there's nothing wrong with that you know and if anybody says there's anything weird about that it's just like well go fuck yourself like yeah you don't you don't know what i'm doing you don't know what the shit i'm going through or Mm -hmm. any of that so you know a lot of people think they have the best interest of other people yeah that's not very true actually yeah i i I used to fucking think about that shit all the time i'm just like oh man like trying to like maybe impress people or you know do something to please people but at the end of the day, they're like they they're probably not gonna give a shit. So you know, surround yourself with the people that do wanna <laughs> that do give a shit. Yeah, yeah. You know, and just and just check up on yourself sometimes. That's all you can do, man. That's all you fucking can do. And drink water. <laughs> drink water. And check For out sure. your when's your when's your appointment? February second. February second. Yeah, so I'll get all the blood work. Well, shit. Let me know. I'm yeah. fucking. I'm curious. Yeah, that's why too. I was like, I'm like, are you diabetic? I mean, it's man? it's been. I mean, so so I have signs of down back here, back in my uh, my skin uh-huh. right here of discoloration. Uh huh. So um, she did agree for me to continue to use the compression socks. I I went to like an uh, emergency, one of those small emergency places. Uh huh. 
And the guy was like, oh, yeah, you need, you have circulation that's not too great. So gotcha. wear compression socks. So yeah. I've been kind of styling out the compression socks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's been Yeah, they're a little swaggy. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, whatever. So <laughs> most of the times I wear pants anyways for work. But yeah. today was the track day, so it's kind of Yeah, kind you're of not going to fucking be there with fucking pants. So, um, I, you know, so I asked her, you know, like, look, what about, you know, I showed her the, the colors and other of the skin. And she's like, yeah. So you have blood going, but coming back, it's the problem. Mm. So she said, you, you know, we got we to gotta check blood work to see if, if you're pre-diabetic or what, you yeah. know. So um, she also checked my neck and the discoloration, the darkness mm. is from uh, the body trying to get rid of the sugar, mm. you know, like they're... That's what they say. Yeah. Right? That's right. I don't know. Sugar is horrible for you. Yeah. Sugar's so that's what the. Skin I say that and I eat chocolate like a. <laughs> dude, chocolate is my weakness. Man. Yeah, the skin tags, you know, those skin tags that yeah. pop up, those all from, you know, pre diabetic stuff. So, yeah, yeah, sugar stuff. Yeah. So, let's see. I'm, I'm, I kind of, you know, having gone to the doctor okay. ages. So I definitely needed, I needed it. Yeah. So let's see. Let's see what happens. Yeah, well, anyway. We'll fucking we'll sign off on this note. Take care of yourself. Take care of your health. For sure. And drink water. And drink water. <laughs> drink water. <laughs>